Party. Now, he has served as Prime Minister and has had the portfolio of Minister of Education, Defense, Housing, Economic Growth, and Job Creation. He represents or is the incumbent MP for West Central St. Andrew. Now, this will be his third general election. You remember, he lost in 2011. He won in 2016. This is now his third. So who will be our next leader? Oh, by the way, Andrew Holness, he's 48. They have a 22-year difference there, the two leaders. Who will be our leader, Andrew or Peter? Jamaica will decide this in this decision 2020. And thank you so much, Herman. And of course, we'll continue to update you throughout the night, throughout the evening, as we get those results coming in. Earl, normally we get full results by about what time? Nine? And certainly by nine o'clock, I think we are well set and um, getting reactions. This will be no Guyana election. No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> well, well, you know, yeah. I mean, and, the, and this is where one can be proud of our electoral system in Jamaica, because yes. I've been tracking and monitoring electoral systems across the Caribbean. And certainly, you know, I mean, we can be proud because by 9, 10 o'clock, we'll get a result. Yes, absolutely. Can, can we go over to the Clarendon seats? Some interesting results coming out there. There's a clear trend that is emerging right across the country at the moment. I'll yes. begin with Northern Clarendon. 66 of 97 boxes counted so far. Mm. Dwight Sibley's of the GLP, a newcomer to the politics, is leading veteran Horace Daly for the PNP. Um, so he has 4,100 votes. Horace Daly, 3,409. So this is a 700, 700 lead. gap. That he's in bearing in mind that the three the divisions 66. had... Um, some very close numbers. If we go over as well into Clarendon Southeastern, because Clarendon is giving us a window to what is happening perhaps nationally. 93 of 135 boxes in Clarendon Southeast. Pernell Charles Jr., 6,562, leading Patricia Duncan Sutherland, who is now on 4,642. And if we stay with Clarendon and pop down to Clarendon Northwest, remember we told you that North and Northwest have traditionally voted together. Philip Henriquez of the JLP has 1,871 votes to Richard Azan of the PNP, 1,483, 32 of 107 boxes counted there. The only other Clarendon seat we should check on now is North Central Clarendon. Um, two hometown boys, 18 boxes of 100 counted, and Robert Morgan, 840, to Desmond Brennan's 796. Mm. So in every single Clarendon seat that we're watching, no matter how far or you know how early the voting is, the GLP has a clear lead okay. in those constituencies. Okay, and from Clarendon to St. Catherine, let's get an update on what's happening with the St. Catherine seats. Southwest Clarendon. Yeah, Southwest Clarendon. Southwest Clarendon. Southwest Clarendon. Southwest Clarendon. Southwest Clarendon. it wouldn't be in there. It isn't. St. Catherine Northwestern, that is Hugh Graham of the PNP 799, that's Bobby Pickersgill's old seat, mm -hmm. Newton Amos, 788, 26 of 118 boxes. So the turnout seems to be pretty low uh, in that one. St. Catherine West Central, Enid Bennett's old seat. Uh, Chris Tufton, 2,789 to Kenyatta Brown of the PNP, 878. 57 boxes of 120. In St. Catherine... Eastern, Joyce Denise Daly, 68% thus far, 1,173 votes to Dwight Peku of the JLP, 551, 28 out of 118 boxes. Low, very low. And in St. Catherine South Central, not unexpected, Dr. Andrew Wheatley, 4,452 to... 
Kurt Matthews of the PNP, 1,240, 71 of 100 boxes. So that one is headed to an early decision, it seems. Mm -hmm. yes. St. Mm -hmm. Catherine East Central, very interesting. Raymond Price of the PNP, 3,758 to Alanda Terrellong of the JLP, 3,282. So could Raymond Price be bucking the trend here? And St. Catherine Eastern again, Dennis Daly, 1,457 to Dwight Piku, 677. That, that's very low for that constituency in East, Eastern St. Catherine. Yes. No surprise in St. Catherine Southwestern, uh, Ever Everald Warmington, 4,237 to Kurt Wall of the PNP, 2,338. And Upton Blake, the independent, he has 24 votes. Can you go back to um, St. Anne Northwest? Just here? before that, we have another declaration to make. Um, TVJ at this point is declaring St. Andrew North Central. <laughs> Carl Samuda. Mm -hmm. So Carl Samuda, we are declaring Carl Samuda as the winner of St. Andrew North Central. So Carl Samuda, we predict, will one, once again be taking his seat in Gordon House. And interviewed him and asked him if he was retiring. <laughs> and he was like, no, he's running again. <laughs> All right, he's <laughs> And so he is, running and winning, <laughs> as we have declared. I suppose he said, why, say, why it's not? It's interesting, though. It, it <laughs> seems that there, there, is, there does seem to be a trend in some of the seats that oh, ordinarily oh, you would yes, not zero. bat an eyelid to say and declare those seats to say, well, this would be a safe seat. And it begs the question, how many safe seats really exist right now? You know, and it is, it is interesting to see the developments here, especially when Clive the North. Let me interrupt you just for a moment, Clive. We are declaring St. Catherine South Central. TVJ declares St. Catherine South Central at this time for the JLP's Andrew Wheatley. Mm -hmm. Safe seat. Yeah, that was expected. It was heading in that direction. Yeah. Uh, Clive, you, 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 still, you still have constituencies that will be voting uh, in a traditional way um, on either side mm -hmm. of the political divide. And I think you have, you know, I mean, probably about 30 or so um, of them that, you know, the political parties, when they go to an election, um, know that they will win those constituencies. Yes. You know, yes. so you, you still have them, but, you know, there is a definitely change that is taking place in terms of the electorate. And it makes some interesting academic study uh, from here onwards, because we have been seeing a trend, a pattern from about 2002 in terms of some of these constituencies. Is it a situation where the party that is better able to organize in this context, mm -hmm. in other words, in a best case scenario, you may be even Stephen, but in this context, there's a greater um, pressure on you to bring the votes out. You have a pandemic, you have bad weather in some constituencies. It seems to me that the party that's able to do that is really changing the orthodox expectations in some of these constituencies. Well, and so you may very well have persons who would expect to win, but because of that, the organization has not stood, um, stood up to the test. We're going to be going to Kingston Central in a moment. Um, Emily mentioned a little early on that that's an interesting one. Of course, this is a seat that Ronnie Thwaites Ronnie has Thwaites. held for several terms mm -hmm. and was one of those that was being put traditionally in the PNP safe seat column. Ra Ralph Brown and Michael Manley um, was there, you know. Well, we are... Yeah, 48. 48 boxes of 80 counted. Imani Duncan Price, 2,480. And Donovan Williams just slightly behind. How is it? No surprises in East Central. Can we go correct? back to the St. Andrew seats? No, Cent stick to, well, what, stick to East Central. Yes, yes. So what's, what's, what's happening here? Jody and Mary is leading Dr. Peter Phillips in St. Andrew East Central. 1,817 to 1,875. She's leading him very slightly. With, with about 50% of the way yeah, gone. That, yes. That's, ah, that's, ah, that's possible Mary. because of what might be taking place in... Casher Park. Sure. Yeah. Um, and it's 55 of 111 boxes, yeah. but it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting at the moment. Yeah. 
And we have seen that happen in, in yes. previous election until you reach okay. Hagley Park and Maxfield. Just, just, be, just before we go to the break, St. Andrews Southeastern, no, this is the, yes. we had it full screen there, we lost it a moment, but this is yes. a seat that um, Julian Robinson, the General Secretary of the People's National Party, he, was a, he won the last time around. Now, Carrie Douglas was one of his councillors in the Trafalgar Park Division. Last year, she supported Peter Bunting in the leadership race. She resigned from as chair of one of the KCAC committees after he lost. And in February this year, she defected to the JLP. She's now running against the MP she formerly worked with. Earl, a look at the numbers. Julia Robinson is leading comfortably at the moment. 2,869 to carry Douglas, 1,901 for 57 of 90 boxes. So I think it is pretty set in a particular direction at the moment. Let's go to the break. We're back with more results after this. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision twenty twenty, we've got you covered. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision 2020, we've got you covered. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will. Thanks. Thank you so much for staying with us. TVJ continues live coverage of Decision twenty twenty election night here in Jamaica, and many of the results we have been sharing so far we are seeing a definite movement towards the jamaica labor party in many of those seats we've declared some haven't declared all but even in the seats that are regarded as traditional safe pnp seats we are seeing um, what might be said to be unusually high numbers mm -hmm. for the jamaica labor party candidates we continue to track those um, let's go to, if we could bring up St. Andrew West Rural. Now, this was one of those interesting seats, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn of the Jamaica Labour Party. Now, she had won by over 2,000 votes in 2016, mm -hmm. so it wasn't a constituency that would normally be regarded as particularly vulnerable 
but um, the PNP put in a strong candidate in Crystal Tomlinson, who seemed to have been doing a lot of groundwork, and there was a lot of, mm. what, what would you say, a lot of, a lot of excitement around her. her. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we're looking here. Um, well, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, the incumbent, she has 64% of the votes counted thus far, 7,642 to Crystal Tomlinson of the mm -hmm. PNP, 4,363. Okay, so we're going to declare this seat yeah. for Juliet Cuthbert so. Flynn of the Jamaica Labour Party. TVJ is declaring St. Andrew West rural for Juliet Cuthbert Flynn of the Jamaica Labour Party. So she has beat off what some regarded as a very strong contender and a strong opponent in Crystal Tomlinson. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. the, other, <laughs> the other rural seat in St. Andrew, East Rural, also contested by a Juliet from the Jamaica Labour Party, Juliet Holness. Um, oh, just before that, though, we do have the mm. Prime Minister's seat on screen, Earl. <laughs> well, with... Let me see. Patrick Roberts of the JLP at the moment has 1,163. Patrick Roberts of the PNP. Of the PNP currently has no one else of the, of the JLP <laughs> um, because he's leading 1,163 to the Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, 1,028. Um, so he, that is 22 of 103 boxes. And well, I'm sure this is dependent on the particular division, division that the votes yes, are coming from. You know, probably it's Moline's division that is coming in there. Yes, so I mentioned, in fact, I was speaking about East Royal, which um, Juliet Holness, the Prime Minister's wife, is running in, and Joan Gordon Webley is her opponent of the People's National Party. Now, this she had won by under 1,000 last time, but she seems, at this point at least, to be comfortably ahead, Earl. Comfortably ahead, 5,388 to Joan Gordon Webley, 3,909. So she, Juliet, Cuth, Juliet Holness has 58% of the votes counted thus far. Yes, yeah, she had won by 669, so she's comfortably ahead of her own margin at the moment. And there is Carl Samuda again, 1,697 <laughs> to, 5, to 577 for O'Neill Lynch of the uh, PNP. I'm anxious to see what's happening between the two Natalies in St. Catherine, yes. North Central. Mm, I, I must Boy. tell you, I, I, I remember Natalie Campbell, um, Emily. Uh, yes, Hurricane on the Natalie. I beg your pardon, uh, just to let our viewers know, Delroy Chuck seat on screen there. 1,901, 72 percent of the votes to, 20, to 701 for David Toller of the PNP. And St. Catherine North Central, you have Natalie Nita, 2,862, and Natalie Campbell Rodriguez, 2,248. And so Natalie Nita is holding her own at the moment, 51 of 104 boxes. She has 55.8% of the votes counted. St. Catherine Northeastern, wow. Kenesia um, Morrison, 3,689 to Oswest Senior Smith, 1,967. Another person who has traveled from one constituency to another and seems to be headed for defeat again here. And this is a very interesting mm -hmm. one. 16 of 90 boxes, early days yet. But Raymond Price is leading the incumbent. Raymond Price has 3,578 to Alonda Terrellong, 3,287. Raymond Price, another late entry into the constituency after the PNP's Winston De La Haye. Indeed. Out. It's a fairly new constituency, not much of a history. Oh, right. Yeah, and, and, and again, it all depends on where they... Boxes this is, are coming I'm, I'm from. I'm so sorry yes. to interrupt you, Floyd, but because we have the results coming in, and this is another seat everybody has been watching, yeah, Earl Weston yeah. Hannibal. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the, the JLP Stamika Davis continues to lead and seems to be headed for an upset over Ian Hales. Mm -hmm. She has 3,498 to Hales of the PNP, 3,109. That's 74 of 111 boxes counted mm -hmm. thus far. And in Manchester Central, yes, Peter know. Bunting oh, yeah. continues wow. okay. to trail. 70 of your... 128 boxes. And Rhoda Crawford of the JLP now has 4,490 votes to Peter Bunting, 
408. So she has 56.7 of the votes thus far. I'm not 17 going to of let 128 you, I'm not boxes. I'm going to let you not mention the 23 votes are wrong, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> For the record. <laughs> and it keeps increasing. <laughs> <laughs> and it keeps increasing. Yeah. And <laughs> Manchester Southern. Here. And an upset seems to be on the cards for Manchester Southern as well because Robert Chin of the JLP now has... 5,338 to Michael Stewart's 4,073, 81 of 114 boxes counted. I think it is, you can do the Northwestern number. Yeah, there, Manchester Northwestern, North this is another one, uh, 41 boxes of 100, but it's Damian Young of the Jamaica Labour Party, 2,316 to Michael Phillips of the PNP, 2007. So he has a 54% um, 54 of the boxes counted, of the votes counted thus far. Uh, the Damian Young of the, P of the JLP holding his own against the incumbent. Mm -hmm. And Audley Shaw remains Manayad. He is 5,023 against Donald Jackson's 2,087 in Northeast Manchester, 76 of 106 boxes. Leading there by about 3,000 votes already. Yes. But again, North, um, Northwest Manchester, if it were to go the way of the JLP, that would be another okay, significant just hold, break. hold on one moment. Another declaration. The TVJ is now declaring Manchester Northeastern. TVJ declares Manchester Northeastern for Audley Shaw. Audley Shaw, we are predicting, will be returning to Gordon House. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to say, oh, Portland Eastern. Well, Anne-Marie Vaz, who won it in a by-election by not lot, so long ago, she's holding her own, 5,540 to the Reverend Purcell Jackson, 4,488. And she had won it in the by-election by 361 yes. votes. Yes. But of course, that was a big upset as the seat had been regarded as safe for PNP. Mm -hmm. So the, the big issue now was, would she be able to hold it in a general? Yes, and this is a, this is a big swing. I think there's a swing nationally, perhaps okay. in the margin of about 10% that I'm picking up from these numbers. And it would appear that we're looking at close to some landslide in the seed count. When we look at, well, Portland Eastern, you see the numbers there, but if we go back to like North Trelawney, if we can bring up North Trelawney, a seat we're watching, the boxes are almost done counted, and Tova Hamilton of the JLP has 5,614, to Victor Wright of the PNP, 4,783. That's over 1,000 votes, mm -hmm. or just under 900 just votes under, she's yeah. leading by yeah. with. 103 and out of 135 boxes. Yes. boxes. That's a huge swing. That is a big swing. Yeah. It, there's, a, there's a swing that is taking place all across the country, it would seem. When I look in St. Elizabeth's Northeast mm -hmm. as well, which is a PNP bastion, 74 boxes of 120 counted, Delroy Slowly of the JLP is leading Basil Waite. 4,716 to 3,388. Let me just give our viewers a picture. Our reporter at the electoral office is saying that the JLP is now leading in 49 seats, the PNP leading in 14. Yes. So the JLP now leading in 49 yeah. seats, the PNP leading like in 14 Bless seats. It. Yeah. And that's the, that's the kind of swing I'm picking up even without us having yes. tracked those numbers. And it's crucial to do that, bearing in mind as well that I think across the country, the PNP would have about a little over 14 safe seats. So they're holding some of their safe seats, and even at the moment, they're trailing in some. I, I think for context, the last time the PNP would have lost St. Elizabeth Northeastern, I believe, was in that wipeout of 1980. Yeah. So that's highly mm -hmm. indicative of what's happening today. Yes. And that is um, Sydney Pagan. Pagan's yes. um, seat and Roger Clark's. Here is St. Elizabeth Southwestern, the weather vane. The weather vane. Well, the weather, the weather vane the is, weather, is weather. continuing <laughs> to be a weather vane because Lloyd, Floyd Green of the PNP, he has 2,685 to you on Stevenson, 1,594, and that's 30 boxes of 105. 
And in southeast St. Elizabeth, Franklin Witter has reasserted his lead there. He is 4,132 to 3,083 for Dwayne Spencer, 50 of 104 boxes. Westmoreland Central, Dwayne Vaz is slightly ahead, 1,916 to 1,610 for, uh, for right. And so that's 39 of 167 boxes. So he has 54.1% of the votes counted thus far. And Mr. Foote has four votes, sir. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let me, well, let, let me let you go ahead. I'm going to be sharing because we're also getting... Um, a little bit ahead from our report at EOJ, who has Kingston Central, but Earl, share, share this one with us. Westmoreland Eastern, another one that, another turn up for the books if it, if it continues that way. The JLP's Daniel Lawrence has 4,203. Luther Buchanan of the PNP, 4,177, 106 of 117 boxes. Not many boxes to go, it's still close. And Westmoreland Western, Wicker McNeil is trailing yes. badly. Moreland yes. Wilson of the JLP, 3,050 to Wicker McNeil's 2,175. And 71 of 121. Well, Imani Duncan Price in Kingston Central seems to have reasserted herself or her position in that constituency. 3,594 to Donovan Williams is 2,514. She has 58% of the votes counted thus far, let, 70 let boxes. That. Let me update that, though, because our report at EOJ has, uh, has an updated number saying that Kingston Central is at 88%, that the JLP candidate is leading 3740 to the PNP's 3665. Mm. Okay. So just thought it important. Yes, important to That's get that clarification important. in. Yes. Yes. That's can you, important. Because of the, um, can you go back to South East St. Anne because of some of the reports that we had earlier? South East? Yes, yes. Saint Lisa, Lisa Hanna. South East St. Anne, the yes. Lisa Hanna seat, yes. um, which when we looked at it a little bit earlier, looked pretty close and uh, Wow, I'm seeing some very close numbers here. Let's see if we can bring it up, Earl. Well, she, Lisa Hanna continues to lead mm. slightly by 2%, 4,485 to Delroy Grandstone's 4,306. And that's 100 mm. of 126 boxes. And, mm. and on that note, let's go to another break here. Decision 2020 returns after the break. TVJ's Decision 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's Decision 2020, we've got you covered. It's the big one. And we are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's Decision 2020, we've got you covered. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. 
Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. And we are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision twenty twenty, we've got you covered. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. Thank you much for staying with us. Decision 2020 continues right here on TVJ, and we are going to begin with a seat declaration. TVJ is going to be declaring now St. Andrew Northeast. TVJ declares St. Andrew Northeast. And that is Delroy Chuck's seat. That one, no surprise. 4,276 to David Tullers, 1,593 Delroy Truck retains that. The PNP on the one that I uh, think Carlin Curlew Robert, Robertson, Robertson won it during the time the, in the 90s when you had the, the NDM factor yeah, for the PNP. That was 93 uh, when she first won it. Let's get, uh, this is where we are in terms of the national count. At this point, the JLP has seven seats, the PNP has two seats. Our report at the Electoral Office says that the JLP is currently leading, however, in 49 seats, the PNP leading in 14. Mm. So, of course, we still have some results to come in, but this is confirmed. JLP right now at seven seats, PNP at two seats, but the EOJ reporting that the JLP is now leading in 49 seats, the PNP leading in 14. And we're talking about Westmoreland, that Westmoreland, this is a seat that for many years had been regarded as a PNP bastion. I remember you would have a local government election and every division would be won by the People's National Party. You'd have an entire parish council comprised of um, PNP councillors. Let's take a look at what's happening over in St. Andrew West. So let's pull up St. Andrew West there. George Hilton. So we can see what is happening. Earl. St. Andrew West, Anthony Hilton of the PNP, 1,911. Dorland Francis of the JLP, 1,698. 46 boxes of 130. So Mr. Hilton has 53% of the votes. St. Andrew Northwestern, Dr. Nigel Clark, the incumbent. <laughs> 3,765 Rohan Banks of the, J the PNP, 1,444. That's 64 of 108 boxes, so we know where that one is headed. Mm. And St. Mary Southeastern, one of the interesting ones. Norman Dunn of the Jamaica Labour Party, the incumbent via a by-election, 3,170. Shane Alexis of the PNP, 2,339, and that's 53 of 107 boxes. St. Mary Central, Maurice Guy, the incumbent from the PNP, 4,273 to Lennon Richards of the JLP, 3,853, 77 of 101 boxes. And Robert Bobby Montague of the JLP in St. Mary Western, 7,222 to Jason Stanford of uh, Stanford of the PNP 4,167. So what we're seeing here is that even in the seats that the PNP are leading in, 
and that would have expected to win comfortably. Yes. Yeah. So we're seeing a much tighter contest. Yeah. So it confirms the national trend. The national trend. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. so there's a significant national and, trend. And Rhoda, Rhoda Crawford continues to lead Peter Bunting in Manchester Central, 5,583 to Bunting, 4,579.90 of 128 boxes. That's and Rhoda Crawford, over 1,000. Now, here's the interesting thing, because Dr. Peter Phillips had said he'd step down if the PNP loses, but some of the people who might have aspired to take his place might be on target to lose their own seats, mm -hmm. and therefore... Yes, it, it would still be the right thing for them to quickly settle the matter of a successor. Here's and Manchester Southern, Earl. Manchester Southern, the 89 of 114 boxes... And Robert Chin continues to lead 5,697 mm -hmm. to Michael Stewart. And in Manchester Northwest, Michael Phillips has slightly forward? regained the lead, 2,867 to 2,838 for Damian Young. He's in the fight for that seat. He yes. definitely is in. No, for uh, Michael. Uh, yeah. Michael. Trelawney Northern. Toya Hamil Tova Hamilton continues to lead there. 7,092 to Victor Wright, 5,963. And it's almost over because that's 125 of 135 boxes. And what is the margin? Over 1,000. Almost over. Well, no surprise, Trulana. Southern, Marisa Dalrymple Philibert, 1,967 to Richard Sharp. Uh, one percent is independent, and Lloyd Gillings of the PNP. I'm not seeing anything there. Okay, I think they need to sort that out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna just come back to the swing. I think, based on where we are at the moment, it is now a matter of what is the margin of victory that the JLP will have, in my view, in this election. You look at some cues from traditional PNP seat like South East St. Anne, never ever won by the JLP mm -hmm. except in 1980 and 1983, I believe. And Lisa Hanna, high profile candidate for the People's National Party, 111 boxes counted of 126. And she's pressure. just slightly ahead mm -hmm. of Delroy Granston. She's on 4,626. He's on 4,494. Absolute tightening of the tightening. race, and you can yeah. see the shift um, that is taking place there. She got thousands and thousands of votes in the last election. One by over three, almost 4,000 votes the last um, time. Right. Yes. And I'm she's sure. just, you know, if we look as well back in North Clarendon. Hold on a moment, mm -hmm. Emily. We have Hanover Eastern on screen. Earl? Well, this is interesting. Wavell Hines of the PNP, 1,896 to Dave Brown of the JLP, 1,872, 34 of 95 boxes. Eastern Hanover, it was expected to be close. Wavell Hines is leading slightly at the moment for the PNP. Hanover Western, mm -hmm. this is the turn up for the books. Yes. Tamika Davis of the <laughs> JLP, 4,641. Ian Hills of the PNP, 4,104, 88 of 111 boxes. A little mm -hmm. way to go still. Yeah. yeah but it just indicates yes. the yes. level of swing that yes. is taking place. Yes. St. James yes. Southern, Homer Davis, 1,906 to Dr. Walton Small, 1,279, right. and that's 31 of 106 boxes. Mm -hmm. St. James West Central, another interesting one. Marlene Malahu Fort doing very well. 1,964, Dr. Andre Houghton of the PNP, 1,269, 37 of 101 boxes. St. James Central, Heroy Clark, the incumbent, 2,729 for the JLP. Andre Hilton, 1,519, the independent, or uh, is that Ras Asta Black? It is. He has nine. <laughs> he has been around. Yes. <laughs> no surprise for this one, St. James Northwestern, Dr. Horace Chang, the multiple... Uh, incumbent, 4,826 to George Hamilton of the PNP, 1,611. And St. James East Central, Edmund Bartlett, the incumbent, continues to do very well, 5,120 to Michael Hemmings of the PNP, 1,949. Uh, I think former Speaker Violet Nielsen was the last person to hold this for the PNP. Correct, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. 
can you go back to Westmoreland Eastern since you're in the West? Luther Buchanan. Yes. Okay, we're going to declare TVJ is now declaring St. James Northwest for Dr. Horace Chang of the Jamaica Labour Party. So Dr. Horace Chang of the Jamaica Labour Party, we predict returning to Gordon House as a member of parliament for Northwest St. James, defeating the PNP's George Hamilton. Have you seen Westmoreland? Oh, St. Thomas West West Western. Western. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then... Emily, I'm tired. Go, no, go ahead. St. Thomas Western, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> 5,720 for James Robertson and Marsha Francis. 3,817 for the PNP. Michelle Charles of the, PN, of the JLP in St. Thomas Eastern. What? This is a significant one. 4,614 to 4,270 <laughs> for Fenton enough. Ferguson. That, that is mm -hmm. massive. Yes. Um, when you look at the what, eastern end of the island, Fenton Ferguson, this is a safe PNP seat, that's, and Fenton Ferguson is trailing by that? approximately 250 votes with 103 boxes counted out of 123. A seat that used to be held by her father, Pernell right. Charles, for it was, uh, yeah. a while. And and three it, terms. It's not, in its traditional sense, it's not a safe PNPC. Portland but Eastern, we... Anne-Marie Vaz, she has 6,711. Purcell Jackson, 5,315 for the PNP. 105 of 127 votes. That one is pretty close to being determined. Mm -hmm. Daryl Vaz, Portland Western, 2,604. Valerie Nita Robertson, 2,171. Well, she's certainly putting up a fight there at yeah. least 50% of the way. Let us go to the break and we'll be back with more results in just a moment. TVJ's this. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision twenty twenty, we've got you covered. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's Decision 2020, we've got you covered. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica.
2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will... Thank you so much for staying with us, Decision 2020, and it is a night for the record books. Let's go now to another declaration. TVJ declares St. Andrew Eastern. TVJ is now declaring St. Mm. Andrew Eastern. Okay. For favor. What's this? So we're declaring St. Andrew what's Eastern the, for Fable Williams. Here? Fable Williams will be returning to Gordon House, having defeated okay. Venetia Phillips of the People's National Party. We're talking about Central Kingston. I want to bring our listeners up to date on that. Um, the results I'm seeing here um, suggest that it is yeah. almost over. 79 out of 80 boxes uh, with the JLP's yeah, Donovan Williams at 4590 mm. to Imani Duncan's mm. price, 4070 Wow. Yes. Mm. I heard that wow, Floyd, all yes. across the room. <laughs> yes, that is. Tell me how a, significant this that is. That is a big blow. That is a big blow because, I mean, it's going to be difficult with one box to go but, to... But, Sorry, um, it's now 80 on the screen. So it's sorry. Gone. It's gone, Floyd. It's gone. Okay. So, it's gone. So, the EOJ so. has declared it. 4623 to Donovan Williams and Imani Duncan Price, 4147. So that's about over 450 she's lost by in yes. Central Kingston. There, there is something else about it, though, you know. It, 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 that's another important brick in, yes. the, in that Southern Kingston, Southern St. Andrew belt that the JLP has been able to install now. Mm -hmm. The PNP has East Kingston and Port Royal. Mm -hmm. They now have Central Kingston, Western Kingston, and then you have the PNP with South St. Andrew and Southwestern St. Andrew and Western St. Andrew. But you see the, P the JLP making inroads there, and that is a constituency in which a significant development is slated to take place yes. in terms of government circle and oh, new housing and in housing that area. Development. Okay, let's just say, well, we have East Kingston and Port Royal on the that. screen there. Philip Paulwell um, leading comfortably at this point. But since we had mentioned St. Andrew East Central a little bit earlier, where Jody and Mary had been leading, Peter Phillips has managed to win the seat. He has polled 4,963 to Jody and Mary's 3,881. All boxes counted. This, okay. Could this, though, could this postpone or could this change Dr. Phillips' timetable for his departure from the leadership of the PNP, or why, does it hasten it? But why should it? The, the One would say that in a leader-centric country, yes. might it not be argued, and Dr. Phillips said in response to Janelle that, yes, I heard it today, unequivocal. that he would step down if, if the PNP lost. And yeah. my, the, the only thing I would say, stay We're on long enough. One second, Earl, um, one second. Um, TBJ now declares St. Andrew East Central. TBJ declares officially, all right, I did it, but we're doing it officially. So we're declaring St. Andrew East Central for the PNP's Peter Phillips. Right, my point is stay, uh, stay on long enough to properly organize a, a, a succession and hand off because there will be lots of bruised yeah. egos and bruised no. um, all kinds of hurts going, hurting going on. Well, in the, in the, but the show he does it better exactly. because what's going to happen? He has, he has mm -hmm. indicated that he is going to step down if the PNP should lose. Mm -hmm. But it, it can't be an instant action. I mean, measures has to be put in place to facilitate the transition. I, I think the fact of the matter is that what we're witnessing now means that even if you were to hold on for that in an interim period, it's going to be bitter. It's going to be very, very difficult. Of course because they're going to lay everything at his feet. Mm -hmm. And it means, therefore, that the PNP has a lot to do in terms of organizing to move ahead and to sort out their leadership. And I would not want to be in his shoes at any, any at all. Can, no. we, can we pop over to Westmoreland Western? Because mm -hmm. the people who are a senior vice president of the People's National Party, Wicca McNeil has held the seat forever. Westmoreland is PNP country. <laughs> Dr. Wicker McNeil is trailing a man whose name I didn't even internalize before this election. Moreland Wilson, 
4,909 votes Western Westmoreland. Wickham McNeil is on 3,778, trailing <coughs> by over 1,100 votes with 94 boxes of 121 counted. Mm -hmm. And we were thinking perhaps some movement would be taking place in central <laughs> Westmoreland, um, where Dwayne Vaz is going up there against um, George Wright. There is some movement, but the movement is right across Jamaica. What, so in what? central Westmoreland, 73 boxes counted. Mm -hmm. George Wright of the JLP, 3,499. Dwayne Vaz of the PNP, 3,220. It's now a matter of the length of the margin of victory for the Jamaica Labour Party for this parliament. And the last time we had a count, they were leading in 49 seats to 14. That may have gone up with the loss of central uh, Kingston by Imani Duncan Price. I think Luther Buchanan might just hold on to Westmoreland Eastern. Uh, they, I think there's only one box left, and he has 4,750 to Daniel Lawrence of the JLP 4,667. Yes. Dwayne Vaz continues to trail at this point. 34.99 to the JLP's George Wright. Vaz is at 32.20, 73 boxes of 167. It looks as if Don Anderson's polls were really correct in terms of the lead, the national lead for the JLP, because this is exactly what it is translating in seat count wise across the island. Yeah, for, for uh, okay. Eastern um, Westmoreland, as I said, was held by PJ Patterson. There's no way you take that seat with only 120 votes or so. So, so, so that, um, that has been declared now? Um, Just the, one the, box to go, Floyd. One box to go. In 1980, he lost it to Euphemia Euphemia. Stevens. Euphemia. Um, oh, yes. 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 and, oh, no. Yeah. And, and, and that was a famous one. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, this one will be famous as well. Well, no, Luther Buchanan seems to be just about holding on to it. Oh, okay. Dion, if we can go back to the Clarendon Cause seats, because this will give us a further window into the national swing, North Clarendon. Horace Daly, the incumbent, 83 of 97 boxes. Northern Clarendon, Dwight Sibley's is leading of the GLP with 5,104. Horace Daly, 4,511. It's about 500 and something votes. Yeah, about that. With how many boxes? 83 of 97. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 14 boxes 14 left. 14 boxes left. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Northwest, North Northwest Clarendon, 81 boxes of 107. Richard Azan has pulled ahead slightly of Philip Henriquez. He's on 4,601. And Philip Henriquez of the JLP on 4,387. 81 of 107 counted in Northwest Clarendon. You have anything from Southeast Clarendon and Central Clarendon? Southeast Clarendon at the moment, 123 of 135 boxes. Oh, Southwest, rather. Sorry, sorry about that. Southwest, because you had declared Southeast before. No, we hadn't no, declared no. it. It wasn't declared. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. But so we're Cornell looking Charles at dam leading. damage limitation also. Clarendon Southwestern. Mm -hmm. What do you have there, Earl, for Southwestern? Um, let me see, going back up to it, if I can find it quickly. Clarendon Southwestern. You have Cousins of the PNP, 4,050, and Kent Gammon of the JLP, 2,392, 2, 59 of 96 boxes. So the PNP, it seems, will hold on to Clarendon Southwestern. North Central Clarendon. Colonel Charles's old seat, 68 boxes of 100 county, counted. Robert Morgan of the JLP, 3,547. And he's leading Desmond Brennan, who is now on 2,208. So he's leading by 1,300 votes with over half of the boxes counted mm -hmm. so far in North Central mm -hmm. Clarendon. And in Southeast okay. Clarendon, Colonel Charles Jr. is holding there by over 2,500 votes. Let's, let's go over wow. to Manchester and take a look at what's happening there. We have Manchester Central, Central. on screen. 
It's still on. Rhoda Crawford, 6,141 to Peter Bunting, 5,183, and that's 98 of 128 boxes. And Dion, Mr. Chung has 35. So 54.1% of the votes have gone to Rhoda Crawford thus far. Peter Bunting, 45.6% of the votes. He's in trouble. And how many boxes? 98 of 128. So you have what? Um, 30. 30, 30 boxes left? 30 boxes. So he has to pray and hope that those boxes aren't um, Belfield. Are from Belfield. Are from Belfield. <laughs> Trelawney <laughs> North. Trelawney North is gone. Yes. yes. That's 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 it. Dover Hamilton, eight thousand four hundred. That's a that's a final. Yes. Yes. She, she has won it. Wow. No, so no. Wow. Yeah. That's another. Okay, so we're declaring Trelawney North for Tova Hamilton of the Jamaica Labour Party. She has defeated the incumbent Victor Wright of the People's National Party. And again, the last time the JLP won Trelawney North, I believe, was 1980. 80. 80. That yeah. was Keith um, Russell. Russell. Keith Russell. Russell. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if we look back over Hanover, because I'm interested yes. in the Hanover Trelawney. Westmoreland swing. Tamika Davis of the JLP is leading 5,022 to Ian Hales' 4,420, 95 of 111 boxes counted. It's 500 Western and something. Home. She's leading by about 500 and something <coughs> votes there. Yeah. Sorry, you said how many boxes? 95 oh, out of 111. 16 boxes. 11 yes. boxes to go. 16 boxes to go, rather. Thank you, Floyd. And over um, Eastern is also it's very actually, interesting. No, hold on, hold on. I'm getting some information that an updated number that's 98 boxes now. For Hanover the count. West. Hanover West. Okay, so that's 98 of 111, in fact, with the JLP's um, Davis at 5,022 to Ian Hill's 4,420. about 600 lead. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Hanover Eastern, Dave Brown of the JLP is pulling ahead slightly of Wavell Hines of the PNP, 2,487 to 2,258, but it's still a little bit early, 44 of 95 boxes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we're back in Clarendon, Earl. Yes. And uh, again, Southwestern Clarendon, the PNP is holding this one. Cousins of the PNP, 4,251. Gammon of the JLP, 2,537. 64 of 96 boxes. What's happening in my parish? Okay, <laughs> St. Mary, St. <laughs> Elizabeth, Southeastern. Norman Dunn, 4,454. Shane Alexis of the PNP, 3,312. St. Mary's Central, Dr. Guy for the PNP seems to be holding on. 5,153 to Lennon Richards of the JLP, 4,713. That's a four point lead. Bobby Montague of the JLP, doing very well in St. Mary Western, Western. 7,805 to Stanford of the PNP, 4,688, and that's 113 of 140 boxes. Um. St. Elizabeth, Northwestern, J.C. Hutchinson, 4,312 to Ryan Keating of the PNP, 2,037. J.C. Hutchinson doing very well there. Okay, so we're declaring that seat for J.C. Hutchinson. TVJ is declaring for J.C. Hutchinson. St. Elizabeth, Northwest goes back into the JLP column. Can you go back to St. Thomas Eastern? We hadn't been to St. Thomas in a bit. We we'll want to finish St. Elizabeth and then oh, we'll, sure. we'll look yeah. at what's happening on the other end of the island. St. Elizabeth Northeastern, Delroy Slowly of the JLP. 6,202 basal weight of the PNP, 4,985. Wow. That's 100 of 120 boxes. And this Basel is, Wade is in trouble. Yeah. A, that, that is a shocker. Yeah. St. Elizabeth shocker. Southwestern. In fact, in a sense, St. Elizabeth Southwest is doing better for the PNP than St. Elizabeth Northeastern. Yeah. Um, the 
Floyd Green of the JLP, the incumbent, 6,231. And Yuan Stevenson of the PNP, 5,146, 75 of 105 boxes. And in St. Elizabeth, Southeastern, where the PNP was spinning some hope, Franklin Witter, the incumbent, 5,595. Dwayne Spencer of the PNP, 4,221. The swing is going against the PNP. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so can we go back to St. Thomas now? Those seats being eagerly watched for St. Thomas Eastern. We'll bring that up in just a moment, listeners. But Michelle Charles still leading Fenton Ferguson mm -hmm. here. 53-37 mm -hmm. to 47-74. 108 boxes out of 123. That is mm -hmm. interesting. And the general might be hanging up his stars. Yeah. Yes. St. <laughs> Thomas the Western. James Robertson, 6,090. Marshall Francis of the PNP. 4,015. Again, a last-minute change did not help the PNP no. here. Well, certainly not to take them to victory. That's 102 of 152. 106 of 152 boxes. Let's go over to St. Thomas and find out what's happening with Raymond Price and Alonda Terry Long mm -hmm. in East Central St. Catherine. So Terry Long has overturned the lead that Price had. Terry Long now has 4,665 to Price, 3,569, and that's 71 of 90 boxes. So it is looking promising for Terry Long at this point. That seems as if the Gregory Park boxes are coming came in. in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in St. Catherine North Eastern, 102 boxes of 107. And the JLP's Morrison, Kerencia Morrison, Kerencia Morrison, 5,607 to 3,160 for Oswest Senior Smith. The JLP has certainly significantly increased mm -hmm. its vote count in, or certainly its percentage in that constituency. Yeah, That's because valid. I was looking at that constituency in terms of the numbers and any, any uh, party that receives over 5,500 votes, you know, has always won it over the past uh, three election cycles. All right, we're going to be declaring St. Catherine Northeastern. TBJ now declares St. Catherine Northeastern. So we're projecting Currency and Morrison winning this for the Jamaica Labour Party over the PNP's Oswest Senior Smith. This was one of those seats the PNP had targeted, yeah. um, given its very small margin in the last election. This was the 161 uh, yeah. majority, yeah. as One, I recall. That, that was Phyllis Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leslie Campbell last held this. Yes. Yeah. I wonder what's happening to St. Catherine. Okay, ho um, ho hold on a Southeast. moment, hold on a <laughs> moment, um, Earl, Newton Amos. Yes, this is a turn up yeah. for the books. 82 of 118 boxes thus far, Newton Amos, 3,440 to 2,992 for Hugh Graham of the PNP mm. and the independent candidate having 14 votes. 2,972. What's that? 2,972. 2,972. St. Catherine Southeastern. Another interesting mm -hmm. one, Robert Miller of the JLP 1661 to Colin Fagan's yeah, 1221. That's 32 of 122 boxes. Early days yet mm -hmm. for that one. Mm -hmm. But Robert Miller is leading the incumbent. And, and given and, the and context. He will, develop from the, he will yes. have more from the national trend, that's clear. Fitz, Fitz Jackson it's in St. Catherine Southern, yeah. one of the stronger mm -hmm. PNP incumbents, 6,318 to Delroy Dubney's 5,576, is it? Yeah. It's but even that is showing, even yeah, that is showing a trend TVJ. because yeah. it's hold, hold declaring. On moment, declaring. Hold on a moment for me. TVJ is declaring St. Catherine South. TVJ declares St. Catherine South for Fitz the Jackson. PNP's Fitz Jackson. Hmm. But, but you just look at the margin, the margin there for Fitz because Fitz the last time won by over 2,000 votes. Ah. Yeah. Over 2,500. And um, he's hot. down um, just yeah. over 1,000 votes yes. now. Yeah. Well, at this rate, he'll be one of the um, minority in the, the PNP side. No doubt glad for even that reduced majority. Let's go to the break when we come back with more results here on Decision 2020. Soon come. But Decision 
2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voters' count, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's Decision 2020, we've got you covered. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voters' count, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's Decision 2020, we've got you covered. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voters count, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision twenty twenty, we've got you covered. It's the big one. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Decision 2020. Now, we are going to start out with a declaration, Eastern Westmoreland. We are declaring Eastern Westmoreland. This has now been counted, all boxes counted. The JLP's Daniel Lawrence has won the constituency of Eastern Westmoreland by eight votes, EIGHT, right. over the PNP's Luther Buchanan. Mm -hmm. this, and this is a young man that I understand was a member of the PNP YO and also a part of the executive of really? um, let's just, Buchanan's let, constituency. Yes, let's just oh. update on the other Westmoreland yes. seats while yes. we're in that part of the yeah. country. Um, Central Westmoreland at this point in time. Can we bring up Central? 97 boxes of 167. The JLP's George Wright also leading in Central. 4,800 to Dwayne Vaz's 3893. And Western Westmoreland. 105 boxes out of 121. The JLP's Moreland Wilson, 5533, leading Wicker McNeil, 4287. I think wow. I have to go to the Westmoreland person on the panel now. I am <laughs> absolutely stunned. Yeah. Uh -huh. I am completely stunned. I've been saying from the start of the evening there are some trends developing, but this is a seismic shift that has taken place nationally. I've never been old enough to see a, P a JLP MP in Westmoreland. We had JLP MP in the 1980s, as you know. But you don't speak of Eastern Westmoreland and speak of having a JLP MP. You don't countenance Central Westmoreland with 
a JLP MP, and certainly you will countenance Western Westmoreland with a JLP MP. And what is happening now is a massive national swing. I do not know what has been happening in the uh, People's National Party, but there is some disaffection perhaps with the body as a whole because all of their big wigs are in serious danger of losing and their political bastions have okay. crumbled. TVJ now declares St. Catherine West Central. TVJ is now declaring St. Catherine West that's, Central that's for the JLP's Christoph. Mm -hmm. Need to update you on St. Anne's Southeast, Lisa Hannah's seat. St. Anne's Southeast right now, 119 boxes of 126. The JLP's Delroy Grandson leading right now with 49.19, Lisa Hanna at 49.10. So a nine vote difference separating the two at this point. And uh, who can count better than me? Seven boxes left? Right, seven boxes yeah. left. And I'd just like to make the point that in 1980, when the PNP was almost wiped out across the nation, yes. Seymour Foggy Mullings was able to retain yes. that seat for the PNP right. with it a margin of 561 votes. It was, it was one of three rural constituencies that was held, okay. the other two being mm -hmm. uh, West Central St. Mary at the time and East St. East St. Mary. And that, that seat has been seen as rock solid and pregnant. Yeah. Yes. yes. Can I just come in here now? Horace Daly has lost North Clarendon. 97 of 97 boxes counted. Dwight Sibley's, a newcomer to the politics, has 6,030 votes. Horace Daly has 5,322. It's about a 700 margin between Horace Daly and Dwight Sibley's in North Clarendon. So that goes down as a declaration, Northern Clarendon, for the JLP's Dwight Sibley's. It's a long night for the People's National Party. Oh, yes. mm. We've often said as well that one, one, just I'm so sorry, Emily, one moment. Southwest St. Catherine. Let's go to Southwest St. Catherine. We're now declaring, TVJ declares Southwest St. Catherine. That's uh, Warmington. Warmington <laughs> over my former neighbor <laughs> on Taylor Hall, Dr. Kirk Wall. Mm -hmm. Well, he'll be back in Gordon House. I was, I was back to the theory, Dion, that Northwest and North Clarendon would vote together. That has been the trend in the last three, four elections or more. North, North Clarendon has gone to the GLP's Dwight Sibley's and Philip Henriquez is leading 5,457 to Richard Azan's 5,156. 95 of 107 boxes counted. St. Anne Northwest was just, oh, we have it back on so screen, we have Earl. Boxes yes. Yeah. Yeah. Henriquez of the JLP, 5,116. Richard Azan of the PNP, 4,982. <coughs> and that is 95 of 107 uh, boxes counted. Wow. And St. Anne Northwest, mm -hmm. Crystal Lee. 118 of 127 mm -hmm. boxes, 7,366. Dayton Campbell, 5,481. A sizable lead for her about, by about 14%. That Peter Shand with 720. That and again, the independent candidate, Peter Shand, 726, 5.4% of the votes. Shand factor again. But no, again. You don't see an independent candidate getting so, um, even 1% of the votes normally. Uh, yes. but, but can uh, I just say a simple calculation I just did? Even if we gave Dayton Campbell all of, Shan. All all of, of votes, she would still get Chan's vote, he, he would, would still be yeah. trailing Crystal Lee by mm. about a thousand. Yeah. So this is now part that, of that, the national that, swing. That and in fact, in fact, TBJ is now declaring St. Anne Northwestern for the JLP's Crystal Lee. That constituency has demonstrated once again its propensity to have uh, newcomers or no-name individuals uh, mm. axing big wigs. Because you will remember uh, Verna Parchment. Yes. And uh, I think it was wow. Arnold Bertram. 
a couple of years ago. If, yes. we, if we could look back then, Dion, on Manchester Central, since so many of the stalwarts yeah. in the PNP have lost tonight. This is Peter Bunting's seat, 105 boxes of 128 counted. Rhoda Crawford, 6,621. Peter Bunting is trailing by about 1,100 votes. He's on 5,582, 105 of 28 boxes counted. And it's been consistent. Yes, it's part of the swing that, that we're 23, seeing. 23 boxes left. Yes, but, and Rohan Chong has 37. <laughs> Very expensive 37 votes. I, I was saying we should do a per capita calculation. <laughs> What about Manchester Here are we South? In Saint Anne Southwest, the JLP is Xavier Main at sixty-four seventy-nine. The PNP is, and in fact, we are declaring that seat. We're declaring Xavier Main the winner of that seat. TVJ declares. Okay, we'll be giving you an updated seat count soon, viewers. But as you can see, the results coming in thick and fast. Dion, a, a couple of persons on Twitter have been making the 1980 comparison and quite, quite appropriately so. But the thing is, the circumstances of 1980 yeah. were Good. considerably different, different from the yeah. circumstances yeah. of 2020. Ideological. So yes. I think it makes 2020 even more significant. Of I, course, I, I agree. the COVID-19 is a factor, but in terms it, of how it influences people, I'm just saying it is something that has overhung mm -hmm. um, us during this period. I'm not saying that this has been a factor. But I think what also needs to be looked at, St. Andrew Southeastern, we're declaring St. Andrew Southeastern, another declaration from TVJ. We are calling this one for the PNP's Julian Robinson. So the PNP's General Secretary holds on to his seat. And let's face it, as reluctant as he might be, his name will again be called in respect of the leadership stakes for the PNP. Yes. When we talk about the swing to the JLP, I think it has to be borne in mind how narrowly the JLP won the 2016 election. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that was by a whisker, 32-31. Yes. Yes. And here we've seen the country it's now. Decisive. Yes. 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 Um, significantly um, mm -hmm. going JLP. Nothing close about what is happening tonight. Looking back at St. Thomas Eastern, four boxes left. Michelle Charles is at 58.49. Fenton Ferguson at 52.44. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's done. So about 600 votes now separating them. Yeah. And four boxes left. Fenton Ferguson has been there since 1993. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he unseated her father, Pernell Charles Sr. Mm -hmm. Did we declare St. Andrew Eastern? If what? Yes. Eastern. Yes. 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 Oh, we, we are declared, declared, we are oh. declared St. Andrew Eastern ah. for Fable Williams. Okay. East and Rural? It's um, Earl, in fact, you mentioned that he unseated Pernell Charles Sr. No, we didn't. Emily. Who is this year retiring from yes. politics. <laughs> Having gone to a different constituency, mm. Clarendon North Central, mm -hmm. and had quite a successful stint there. Yes. And some now his of, son, some kind of Pernell Jr. Some kind of symmetry yes. Yes. there. East Rural St. Andrew at the moment, box is not done, but Juliet Holness is leading by over 2,400 votes. 106 of 132 boxes counted. She's at 7,944. Joan Gordon Webley, 5,586. So she's clearly benefiting from the national swing over there in East Rural. She doesn't seem to be able to, she probably won't get the 10,000 that she got in 2016. But the margin of the win is now about two and a half times at the moment, her 2016 margin. Hmm. West Rural, St. Andrew, we had gone back to West Rural for? I think we had declared that. Yes. What? West Rural? I think we need to keep looking at St. Anne Southeastern. Five boxes are left there. I, am, I have Lisa Hanna with 5,019 
and Delroy Granston with 4,961. Yes. <laughs> So, so that's what, 39 plus 9, that's 58 votes Lisa is leading by in Southeast St. Anne. Yes. Nail biting. I've not heard, I've never ever seen anything like this in Coming from over Southeast St. Anne. This is Foggy Mullings' old seat, yes. right, Earl? Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And Ivan Lloyd. Yeah. In fact, it was... From the beginning, it, it has been PNP territory, Dr. Yes. Ivan Lloyd winning it in 1944. Right. Mm -hmm. So apart from the 1983 boycott of the election by the PNP, this is a seat that has been held continuously by one party uh, since universal, universal adult, adult suffrage. 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 Right. Yeah. Southeast Clarendon, Colonel Charles Jr., Seems he has taken that five boxes left to go. Pernell Charles Jr. Southeast. Clarendon, 9,761. To Patricia Duncan Sutherland, 6,925. Wow. 130 of and 135 and, and, boxes. And he has increased the margin. Yeah, but yeah by hundreds. Yeah, you know, um, by well over th um, a thousand or so votes. Yeah. I've not quite seen an and, election and, like and, this. And year. he has, I know that there was a concern coming out of the by-election. Yes. Because there was a 18% yes. voter turnout and he managed, he got about 4,000 something votes. And they have managed to pull, rally the ba their base and carry some others. And uh, he's now up close to the margin by which uh, Roddy um, got in 2016. Basil Waite remains in danger of losing, if we can bring up Northeast North St. Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth. Northeast St. Elizabeth. 101 of 120 boxes counted. Mm. Well, he has to rally back tonight. Well, what about Southwest St. Elizabeth and Southeast? We did, I think Southwest went. Okay, I was just looking at um, what's happening with the PNP vice presidents. Yeah. So Paulwell is Paulwell safe is safe. Mm -hmm. Crawford isn't in the running. Mm -hmm. um, Wicker McNeil is in danger. Um, the latest Mikhail with Mikhail Phillips, Phillips mm -hmm. Manchester Northwest, four boxes left here to count. Right now, he's in the lead with 52.25 over Damian Young of the JLP 46.67. Okay. He's likely to hold on. He's yeah. likely to hold on. It's, it's, it's one of the, well, it is the strongest PNP seat in Manchester. No, you might say the least weak. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester Central. 112 boxes. It's at the foot of the TV. 112 of 128 counted. Rhoda May Crawford, 7,111. Peter Bunting, 5,908. Yeah. That's, that's 1,200 leads. It has not leads. changed. <laughs> that's a consistent 1,000. It's a consistent 1, over 1,000 mm. leads. This will have a lot of implications. Looking at Lisa Hannah's seat, I think this is the same. We had five boxes left? Yeah. Okay, we're still there. Yeah. I think we have to wait. Yeah. Not many, not many persons in the PNP with, say, leadership aspirations will come out of this being particularly strong. Yeah. Save and accept. Mark Golding. Well, he has, he has hardly ever expressed any such aspiration. Yeah, I, I, think, I think others have tried, to project, yes. have tried to project that onto him. I yes. don't know whether he'll now listen to them. Well, it seems he'll have to step up. Let's yes. see. Yes. Very interesting. Mm. So, yes, still, still five boxes to go in St. Anne's Southeastern. Let, let me just bring in... Don Anderson has been watching all of this watching all the results coming in. And Don, it's time to ask you, tell me what you're seeing. Uh, 
Um, perhaps you could unmute your mic, Don. We're not hearing you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, this, is a, this is a major shift. The writing was clearly on the wall from all that we have done. Um, my mic is actually unmuted. Keep going, Don. We're hearing you. Keep going. Right. The, the, the results are startling in terms of those who are losing their seats and who are likely to lose their seats. And the, the major implication right now is for the leadership of the party. Um, I think we have probably just one of the vice presidents sure to win, which is Philip Paulwell. But all the others um, are in danger of losing their seats. So there really aren't too many of the front runners in the party left to um, assume the leadership of the party. So not only is the PNP losing this election badly, but it has major implications for the leadership going forward. Um, we understand the current leader says he's going to be stepping down one way or another. Um, but certainly, I don't think that um, this is something that he anticipated. It's a massive loss. And um, I, I, I think it, it is coming as a major surprise to a number of people within the People's National Party and without. The extent of the loss, the loss of all is on the card. But the extent of the loss is something that I think will be will be a, a major surprise. And the part that people were losing, um, it represents a significant shift from the People's National Party towards the Jamaica Lab, Labour Party nationally. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a huge shift. Um, I'm being told that Lisa Hanna has won her seat by 14 votes. That too. Obviously, that one is headed for a recount. Yeah. And in the COVID factor, Don Anderson? I, it's difficult to measure that. Um, the turnout seems to be fairly good. And therefore, you know, one cannot, there's no basis on which we can scientifically assess the extent of the COVID factor. Um, the weather was good, so that's, that's, that's not something anybody can speak to. The weather was good all day. Um, so it's difficult to assess, except to say that nationally, there is total dissatisfaction with the People's National Party and what has taken place. And I think this really must be the single, you're going to break it down some more, but this is the single most important factor that one can ascribe to this, this massive defeat of the People's National Party. Total dissatisfaction within the party right across the board. Even those that are winning except for one or two are barely holding on, like Lisa Hanna um, winning by less than 20, 20 votes. Just to say, uh, Dion, St. Catherine East Central, Alanda Terralong has taken that by over 2,000 votes over Raymond Price. So that is almost a 150% or some figure like that multiplied over his 2016 win. Don, Don Anderson, your thoughts on what we're seeing in Westmoreland? Again, you know, you, you, you heard that Vaz was a bit uncertain. I mean, even though he had a pretty command in victory in the 2016 election. But to see Wickham McNeil lose yeah. and, um, you know, the other candidate in that area losing as well, yeah. comes as a, as a major, Buchanan, as a major surprise. Um, one expected them to hold on to those seats even, even marginally. Mm -hmm. But it's a total, total, total collapse of the PNP's hierarchy in West Milan, you know. As Emily says, she had never seen a, a JLP uh, member of parliament in West Milan for some time. Mm -hmm. So that it is understandable that you would not expect all of West Milan to go to the JLP. But it has, and quite convincingly so. None, none is a marginal. Mm -hmm. Don, know? what do you think so of, is, the, of the voter turnout and the impact that might have had? I haven't quite heard what the voter turnout is yet, um, but it looks to be pretty decent. It looks to be more than the 40 that I anticipated. Um, I don't know if anybody has that voter turnout to date, cumulatively, nationally, but it seems to be good in several of the areas. But that would be below what it was for 2016, if it yeah. is 40. Oh, yeah. Sure. In 2016, it was 47.7. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, but based on all the other factors, right. COVID, 
the mm -hmm. fear factor, the, the potential for rain, which didn't materialize, um, one would not have expected a turnout more than 40%. Um, but it looks as if it's, it's pretty decent. It may be around 40, 42% based on the numbers I'm seeing. I don't know if there's a national, if there's a national um, information, national data right now to talk to us in terms of that. I see the count for a number of the seats stuck at about halfway. So you know what that means is that in a very short while, we'll have a rush of a final rush. results. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, because St. James, the St. James numbers haven't moved for a little while. But I, I mean, I, I heard... Um, well, um, um, one moment, Floyd. We are going to declare Southern Trelawney. TVJ so. now declares Southern Trelawney. Mm. Her, so. well, that's expected. And that's right, Marissa that Dalrymple. Mm. Philibert returning back to Hannah Gordon House. house. Uh, Emily, hmm? you went back to Ian here. Yeah, I was making the point, uh, Dion, before you made that declaration that, you know, I heard Don's point about um, a 40% turnout being uh, pretty decent uh, amid uh, the COVID factor. But I still have a concern in terms of the engagement and involvement of our citizens in the democratic process. I, I mean, I know that we don't know the final turnout as yet, but, you know, I think anything below 50% in a modern democratic context is very low. Yeah, but given the special well, circumstances. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just declare Portland Eastern. Mm. TVJ declares Portland Eastern for Anne-Marie Vaz. Seven thousand six eleven to yes. Reverend Jackson's five thousand eight forty three, a significant oh, increase in her margin yeah. of victory. If we pop over back to Western Hanover, Ian Hales is on the verge of losing his seat. Mm -hmm. One hundred and eight of one hundred and eleven boxes. Tamika Davis five thousand eight thirty two, Ian Hales four thousand eight forty four. So he's trailing there by 900 and odd okay. with three boxes to go. But based on the margin of this seat, it is yeah, not likely mm -hmm. that he will come up. And she's clearly benefiting from the seismic national shift. Not a newcomer. Newcomer. Yeah. She's from the air, I understand. Yeah. She went to Rossi's. She's an attorney, I understand, yeah. and has gone back to um, the constituency to practice her law there. And just like Anne-Marie Vaz in Eastern Portland, She's been quietly working, working. the seat. Okay. And once you work yourself in and the people see some potential, they will give you some support. We haven't been doing a count of how many of the JLP's female candidates have been successful tonight thus far, but I get the impression that they are generally doing quite well. We, have, we haven't had any unexpected seat that the JLP has lost. Yes. No. Um, Hanover Eastern, Wavell Hines of the PNP looks like he is trailing badly as well 80 boxes of 95 and dave brown of the jlp has 4769 hines 3885 we we are now declaring hanover western mm -hmm. so we're declaring hanover western now for tamika davis of the jamaica labor party wow mm. Mm -hmm. so. and that's 54 percent of the votes for her 5832 so another PNP incumbent losing his seat there. So um, Central Westmoreland, Dwayne Vaz is about to lose Central Westmoreland. Wicca McNeil is about to lose Western Westmoreland. Luther Buchanan has lost Western Westmoreland. Eastern. Eastern Westmoreland, thank you. And um, the Hanover seats, Dave Brown seems to be holding on. And Hanover Western, Ian Hales is on the verge of losing it. So the entire Western Belt and Trelawney North, that entire belt is all changing from orange to, to green. green. And St. Elizabeth as well. One, one moment. And in fact, we TVJ is now declaring Western Westmoreland. TVJ is declaring Western Westmoreland for the Jamaica Labour Party's Moreland Wilson. Wicca McNeil has lost his seat. This is unheard of. I cannot even begin to say 
how absolutely shocking this is to the body politic of the country. And more what? than anything else, apart from the loss which the PNP is going to have to scrape itself up off the ground and do a lot of assessment, what concerns me now is the awesome responsibility that is being bestowed in the lap of the Jamaica Labour Party at a crucial time. And it can have serious implications, but we'll stay with the vote and assess the implications here's, soon. Here's Central Emily. Wow. George Wright, who is the councillor for the Petersfield Division, 149 of 167 boxes counted, and he's 6,569 votes to Dwayne Vaz's 5,455. So he's leading now by 1,100 approximately, and done foot. Okay, let's go to the break, and we come back with decision 2020 in just a moment. TVJ's Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision twenty twenty, we've got you covered. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision 2020, we've got you covered. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision twenty twenty, we've got you covered. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. 
will give you the latest voters count spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's Decision 2020, we've got you covered. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. A process of review. And that process will start immediately. And I think as early as tomorrow, we'll be saying something far more fulsome to the media. Were you shocked by the results, sir? It is, it is, um, it was unexpected. Really unexpected. How much of a you think this unit was? It was a part of the Well, you know, we have to acknowledge that people don't support a party that they perceive to be as disunited. And that's why so much effort was put into resolving those issues. And I think we did do a good job, a credible job, in bringing back those of the comrades who did not win in September last year. To be a part of the campaign, I myself worked very closely with Comrade Bunting, and we've had an excellent period. Perhaps I didn't have enough time to convince the Jamaican people that we were solidly and totally united. And this is work that we have to now do to ensure that the Jamaican people can once more put their faith and confidence in us. Mr. Paul, you really didn't answer the question though. Yeah. Are you shocked by the results that you've been seeing? Especially, sir, given the context that the PNP lost some key seats, West Mullen, St. Yeah. Thomas, talk to us about well, that. Well, let me be, be honest. Um, when I leave my constituency every election evening at 6 o'clock, I go home, I turn off everything, and I wait until about 8.30 to see what is happening on my phone. So it is quite shocking. I haven't come to terms as yet with all of the decisions. And uh, yes, you are, you are correct. It is a, a shocking defeat. But we have been here before. I, I recall in 1980, the very first time I voted in my life, we had a similar defeat. And uh, in less than 10 years, we were back in power. Would you say that this is an indictment on Dr. Peter Phillips' leadership, sir? No, listen, all of us will have to accept full responsibility. I, as campaign director, co-director, I have to take full responsibility for my own role in this campaign. Um, so we are not going to start by pointing fingers, by issuing blame. I think there is enough for all of us to accept and to recognize that we have to come better, that there were certain aspects of our conduct that people did not like, especially the issue of unity. And we have to build back that, we have to build back the trust, and I believe in short order, especially during this critical period when we now have to summon a united effort because uh, that is what is required now to overcome this period and it's going to be with us for some time. And so uh, we really wish the government well. We wish our people well and we are going to embrace all those initi initiatives to ensure that we can overcome. I just want to say something. There were a couple of good ideas that we had in our manifesto and I really want to commend them to the government we are prepared to discuss them. I believe that there were some serious thinking into how we could alleviate the difficulties that people face. I still believe that the proposal to deal with utilities at this time, water and electricity, 
are sound proposals, and I really want to commend them to the government and for us to engage in the dialogue. I think we also have to now far more uh, and aggressively pursue the issue of crime and violence to come to a definite position, one position as a country, so that we can stem this stir. In, so in, in you us. stand before us, were you crying? No, 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 um, not as yet. I'm sure it will come. Dr. Dr. Sir, what happens this morning can can we just have one question at a time? He would resign, so the PMP lose the election. Was that a decision made mutually between him and the rest of the party? Um, I am a, a loyalist. I was loyal to PJ, to Portia, and I'm loyal to Dr. Phillips. That's entirely a matter for Dr. Phillips, uh, and I would not comment. So you're still stepping it. in a position? Me? Yeah. No, I, uh, that has not been in my contemplation at all. I think we have a party now to rebuild, and we have uh, people in the party who are qualified, who are experienced, who will work to rebuild the party. And I have no doubt that we will wheel and come again. Mr. Mr. Paul, you are the vice president of this party. Where is the president at this time? The president of the party will be joining us tomorrow in a press conference. Any other question? Anything else you'd like to add, sir? Yes. Okay. Anything to your support? Uh, for uh, came out. Right. Yeah, well, 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 I have to say to the people of East Kingston and Port Royal, my appreciation. We, we did have some difficulties today. Uh, a lot of the elderly people in the Norman Gardens, they were Springfield, they were afraid to come out even with our urgings and because people regard the constituency as a relatively safe place, safe seat, yeah. the urgings did not work this time. But we want to commend all of those brave people who came out, thank them, and I will be a better member of parliament in for them. What role do you think the manifesto played in what happened here tonight? No, I don't think we can blame the manifesto. I thought we had a very good manifesto. Perhaps um, we weren't able to uh, expound, to get it out there sufficiently. And again, these are things that we're going to have to review and we're going to be able to give you a far more fulsome position uh, as to the reasons for the, this severe loss tonight. Mr. Baldwin, um, with the surprising loss of some of the major experienced candidates who we would possibly be Look into as the next leader of the PNP. Dr. Philip said he will be stepping down from the leadership role. Looking around, you know, who do you see moving forward as the next leader of opposition? Oh. Certainly, with those who have won. No, that, that is far more, far too premature to even start to, to contemplate that. I think we have to take stock, we have to come together, and we have to make those decisions collectively. I think it is it's far too premature now. I think it's the Prime Minister's moment, it's the Jamaica Labour Party's moment. Let us congratulate them and let us wish them well in full and total sincerity. The country is going to need all the luck and the blessings that we can get. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you here? So much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, no problem. Thanks, Paul. RFM. Thank you so much for staying with us on Decision 2020. So it's just really an issue now of seeing what is the margin by which the Jamaica Labour Party has won. Now what we're showing you there is the official seat count is based on the completed seats, but our report at the Electoral Office says the tally now stands at 50 for the Jamaica Labour Party and 13 for the People's National Party. So that's 50 at this point for the Jamaica Labour Party and 13 for the People's National Party. I think at this point it's easier to say which seats the PNP yeah. has won than to try to list the 50 that the JLP has won. So let me just go through them pretty quickly as I'm getting them from the electoral office. So the PNP has held on to East Kingston and Port Royal, St. Andrew Western, 
St. Andrew East Central, St. Andrew Southwestern, St. Andrew Southern, St. Andrew Southeastern. So I'm just listing for you here the 13 seats, that's one, three, at this point in time in Kingston, that we are Andrew. having won by the People's National Party. St. Mary Central as well, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, more. that's seven so that, far that of the 13. Um, coming in as we speak, so St. Andrew, South, St. Anne, South, Southeast, I beg your pardon, as well is another of I think those St. Catherine seats. North Central, the, as I call it, the Battle of the Two Natalies. Natalie Nita has held on to that as well. Yeah, I'm just getting the updated list as we speak. All right, so realistically, Clive Mullings, what and And I, I've seen people as well asking, why is it Philip Paulwell speaking? And shouldn't we by now be hearing from Peter Phillips? Clive? Well, one thing for sure is that we know that Dr. Phillips has been made public his concession, like that he has already called Andrew Honest to congratulate him on the victory. Um, but what this is saying, quite frankly, is that the country has moved decisively against the PNP as it's properly, as it is now um, constituted. Mm -hmm. For the leadership of the party to get this kind of shellacking in seats that normally one would expect them to win by a canter, mm -hmm. or at least to make a very good showing, for West Brown to move in the way that it has is an, an indictment. And I believe the important thing for them now is how we're going to come together. Leadership has to be settled, who's going to come to the fore, and also what it means for our democracy. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a weak opposition, where are the real checks and balances on the floor of the parliament, where legislation is concerned and the constitution and going forward, it is very easy for a party to withdraw, and to go into a bitter time of reflection and rec recriminations. But also on the other side, it's also easy for a party as one like this to be drunk on victory and therefore to move headlong into doing things which ordinarily they would not have done. So it's a situation that is very important for the future of the country as, as to how the leaders of the parties are going to be interacting, how those who come into the parliament are going to take the business of parliament and the welfare of the country and at the same time to understand we are in a COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. Serious decisions have to be made and the economy is going to be under tremendous pressure. And in fact, if we are not able to weather this, it could also mean that the political fortunes of whoever is governing could also be mm -hmm. at risk in the future. So I think it's, it's, it's a, a situation where we are generally surprised by the extent of this, but at the same time, they have to come together and sort out their leadership. I, I, you know, may I give some gratuitous advice? Look at Mark Golding, for instance. She has to step up. We're going to be the leader of opposition business. All of these things have to be sorted out very, very quickly. I think Dr. Phillips has no alternative but to resign. How quickly? As quickly as possible, because they want to lay this at his feet. They're going to lay this also at Bunting's feet, because the person is saying, we're not for that challenge. Maybe. Maybe you know, made a better showing of it all. So Miss Hannah is not in a particularly good position, given the fact that she's won by 14 votes, and of course, you can extra recount on that. So all the main actors, including young Crawford, are going to face serious scrutiny. To me, Mark Golding seems to be the person, wow. like the person to go forward for the People's National Party. Nicole, for you, what happens? I agree with Clive's point about Mark Golding. The fact of the matter is that a country cannot benefit from a weak opposition. And so Dr. Phillips has said and indicated that he will step down or he would step down in the event of uh, a loss. I don't think there should be any delay with that at all because this has been going on for some time. This isn't new. The issue of the leadership of the People's National Party is not a new one. The matter of the disunity in the party is not a new one. It ought not to continue. I think the party has to do some soul searching. And while I understand that there are 
wounds that will have to be dealt with. I suggest that the country nor the party, neither the country nor the party can afford to, to dwell on it because the people are, are changing. And the, the fact of the matter is, we have a new generation, I think, mm -hmm. of voters. I know that there were, I think, 89,000 new voters mm -hmm. on the list. I don't know of if, if many of them were uh, uh, young persons. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the People's National Party has to take a very cold, hard, objective look at itself, at what it is the Jamaican people are saying to the party in very clear, decisive terms, and make the right decisions moving forward. And the leadership issue has to be dealt with as quickly as possible. Floyd, for you? Well, first and foremost, I want to uh, congratulate the uh, Jamaica Labour Party on um, a decisive uh, victory, victory. And to say that the party, we have to move urgently to deal with some of the issues that the Jamaican electorate have seemed to frown upon. And Clive and Nicole have mentioned some of those issues, issues of disunity, in terms of uh, the leadership. And also, there seemed to be a trust deficit between the party and the populace. And that is a matter that has to be corrected. How that is corrected, there has to be an infusion of new, young, and vibrant leadership uh, because you have to have individuals who will be able to take the party probably for the next 10 or so years. You have to, we will have to look futuristically on how we position ourselves for the next couple of election cycle. And we have to do a lot of rebranding, our whole mode of communication, our whole organizational structure, how we um, recruit and train individuals. I tell you, Dion, I was very appalled at some of uh, the, the, the type of canvassing that I am accustomed to from my mother, from Horace Clark, from P.J. Patterson, from Maxine Henry Wilson. It's just not there today. People don't know their voters and people want to just stay on their veranda and do a canvas rather than interacting with the voters. What I call uh, um, electoral engagement is totally absent in the constituencies. And then, you know, I mean, members of parliament have to understand that you can't wait until an election cycle. You are going to come and go out there and press flesh with uh, the people. The people have moved to a stage where they have information at their fingertips, and you have to be constantly in their ears. Let, let, me just, let me just interrupt just for a moment, just to let our viewers and listeners know. So as I said, it's easy at this point to name the seats that the PNP has managed to hold on to, rather than to go through the 50 at this point, which is the count we currently have, 50 to the JLP, 13 to the PNP. So East King's job. East Kingston and Port Royal, Philip Paulwell, um, St. Andrew Weston, Tony Hilton, Peter Phillips with St. Andrew East Central, Angela Brownberg, St. Andrew Southwest, Mark Golding, St. Andrew South, Julian Robinson, St. Andrew Southeast, Maurice Guy, St. Mary Central, Lisa Hanna, St. Anne Southeast, Mikhail Phillips, Manchester Northwest, Lothan Cousins, Clarendon Southwest, Fitz Jackson, St. Catherine South, Natalie Nita, St. Catherine North Central, Denise Daly, St. Catherine Eastern. And if you by some chance are just joining us and you're wondering what, what has South happened Eastern. to a lot of the names you would have expected to have heard, a lot of seats were lost tonight. And this is, what, what's the word Emily was using? Seismic? Mm. Seismic shift. Seismic shift. So yeah. it's a lopsided, there, there are two democratic issues here. It's a lopsided parliament, which is never very good um, because the government gets, you know, much less oversight. Yeah. But on the other hand, 
this mm -hmm. safe seat phenomenon mm -hmm. where we're seeing it once again rocked. And you know, it really challenges the parties mm -hmm. because now they know that, that you have to fight for the voters. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not just gonna be handed to you. And mm -hmm. the poll said it, that uh, the, 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 I, you cannot depend on tradition anymore. It's not about, oh, they have voted like this all along. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that Don Anderson poll that indicated that younger voters who look more at issues tend towards the JLP and older voters who vote along traditional lines tend toward the PMP was a very, very critical bit of information because what it says is that you have to do more than depend on this is how it always uh, has been, right? You have to know, put before voters, what are the issues that we're dealing with? So even, for example, looking at the manifestos, I said to myself, one of the things that I wanted to see was, this is a very serious situation. There's an immediacy and urgency to the situation that I didn't see the question answered. What are we gonna be doing specifically in the next 12 to 18 months that will lay a particular kind of foundation for us moving forward? But this is what people are looking to hear. You spoke, what, what you spoke of polls there. Let me just bring back in Don Anderson because there was a lot of questioning of the polls, mm. Don. Well, you know, it is, it is normal. Um, quite often when a particular poll result is not going in the direction of a particular party, then there's criticism. But this is something we take in stride because, as I mentioned in an article on Sunday, the persons who are most critical generally of the polls are the ones who call me the next morning and ask me if I have any more information. So, you know, we have to look at that. We don't ignore it, but it's a factor that we, 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 you know, we cater for, you know. I think in a nutshell, what, this, what this, this particular performance today says, it's a total rejection of the People's National Party. And therefore, it is incumbent upon them to do some very serious introspection because obviously they have lost the attach they lost the attachment with the people of Jamaica mm -hmm. to have this kind of performance. It's really a disastrous performance on the part of the People's National Party. But if I might say so, the writing has been on the wall for some time. And from 2016, when they lost that election, I believe they've gone into a nosedive to a certain extent. And there, I don't think we've done a poll at all in those four years that suggests that people believe that they are a viable opposition. And it is showing tonight that they have a lot of work to do to retain the confidence of the general public. The leadership issue is something that obviously is going to occupy their minds immediately, but I would like to suggest to them that they may want a little cooling down period. I hear Paul will talking about meeting tomorrow morning. I suspect that in that kind of environment, it will be a very um, hotly debated, a very probably contentious meeting. I think probably it's not the right time to do so. I think perhaps, but it is instructive that Paul has spoke and I, and I hear him being talking very commandingly about a meeting tomorrow as if he has assumed the leadership of the party, but I suppose somebody has to because we haven't quite heard from Peter so far. But um, this is something that they have to think about very carefully. Okay, let's go to very the break. Carefully. We're standing by to hear from the Jamaica Labour Party headquarters. Stay tuned. TVJ's Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's decision twenty twenty, we've got you covered.
It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voters' count, spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? TVJ's Decision 2020, we've got you covered. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you we've got you covered. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. 2020, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision 2020, COVID-style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot-by-ballot ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voters' count spiced with our experienced analysts. Which party will form the next government? staying with us decision 2020 and of course if it hadn't been for covid then would have expected to see many many more people outside the jlp headquarters in fact kamina johnson smith had told me wednesday night that they were going entirely virtual but um, we're seeing some supporters there as i said we are standing by to go to the jlp headquarters um i want to ask floyd about the realities of what we're seeing here in terms of um, who has won for the PNP in terms of the party. But just before that, Earl, let me ask you to, to give us a quick um, government lesson because I see people asking what are the implications here, who can be opposition leader based on who wins seats and, and whatever. So, so Right, obviously you have to be a member of the House of Representatives to be leader of the opposition. Mm -hmm. And the, the field is very narrow. You might have about 13 13 at this point. Yes, and from among those, you then would look at their relative electoral strength. And when you look at those persons, there are some who, um, who might have had leadership aspirations and they have won by a squeaker. Um, so you then look at those who are in a much stronger position electorally. Someone like Mark Golding, for example, would be a natural Can I interrupt you a moment, Earl? We're now going to Belmont Road, JLP headquarters.
We're seeing JLP officials there getting ready. We're expecting to hear from Prime Minister Andrew Holness. We had seen Desmond McKenzie there on screen with Mr. Holness to his, what would that be, his left, right? We had seen Kamina Johnson-Smith. She, of course, was one of the main spokespersons for the party and the manifesto. And uh, we are waiting to hear. Andrew Holness is going to take this as a significant validation of his own leadership, especially, as I said, coming from the 3231, which he was at in especially 2016. Com especially com coming from the defeat he suffered in 2011 yes. as well. And as he should, and just before he comes in, I think the listeners need to understand that this is the first time in 52 years since 1967 that the JLP has won a consecutive second term. Not, not counting 80, the 83 the 80, snap 80, Not counting the 83 80, 80. contested, mm -hmm. yeah? In a contested. In a contested. In okay. a contested <coughs> since 1967. And to have won it in this way, where you have taken the entire country green, you have left the PNP with a lot to think about in terms of who will emerge from its leadership. There must be a lot going through Andrew Holness's mind. And I hope when he speaks, it, it's not lost on him the trust that a lot of people have now reposed in him and the standards to which he must live because of the dwindling numbers on the opposition benches. It's an awesome responsibility, and I really hope that he appreciates that as he comes to deliver his speech to the people of Jamaica very soon. Uh, let me let you pick up what, what you're saying about government. Right. So <coughs> you're going to find that the PNP will need to, I think, select from the, the, the elected members somebody who can command respect and can lead a robust opposition. By the way, yeah. Norman Manley um, did not win um, his seat contested in 1944. Mm -hmm. So he was out of parliament. He was president of the party. But Dr. Ivan, Ivan Lloyd, Lloyd was the leader of opposition business mm -hmm. during that period. I don't think that the PNP wants to go back to, a, to that kind of a scenario in 2020. They'll have, I think they'll elect from amongst themselves somebody to be leader of the opposition or also president of the party, an elected member of the house well, one might see this as an opportunity for the pnp though of course absolutely root, root and branch yes. rebuilding but then the thing is dion they had a moment in 2016 based on the setback remember we went into the elections expecting a pnp win for 2016 as did the pnp no well the, yeah the pnp expected the win in 20, yes. 2016 nobody expected the glp win except ram samuj the poster from trinidad and they came and they won it with a national swing to get a wafer-thin one-seat majority. It was an indication to the PNP that a renaissance was needed in the party. They needed to sit in opposition and to retool. The general secretary should have got in gear to get its machinery going because the JLP had something going that was attracting people in numbers we had not seen before. And to my surprise, even with the challenge to the leadership, I am shocked that the, G the PNP machinery that we have been told about, that we know about, that nearly led them to a consecutive fifth term in 2007. The machinery is completely in a wheelchair. How does okay. a general secretary... We, we, we're going to Desmond McKenzie now. Okay. On an evening when, as a party, we salute a grateful country. At this time, I will invite Reverend Shamar Miller to come and invite the presence of the Most Almighty on this evening's proceedings. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Amen. Most righteous and eternal God, you are the Most High God. Tonight, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this another evening. And so, Father, we pray tonight, Lord God, that you'll continue to inspire our leader in the person of our Prime Minister. God, I thank you for this victory. And so tonight, God, I pray for Jamaica. Lord Jesus Christ, protect us, Lord God, from all harm and danger. 
Lord God, remember crime and violence. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray, O oh God, for a divine intervention throughout every community, every street, every lane, every corner of this country. Lord God, remember our youths, O oh God, protect them from the rapists, the knife men, Lord God Almighty. Lord Jesus Christ, remember at this time, Lord God Almighty, even the men out there, Lord, protect them also, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you once again. And so we look to you with the author and the finisher of our faith. As we continue through this pandemic, God, we serve you a great God, a God that can heal, can deliver, and can set free. And so now in the name of Jesus, we come against this coronavirus. Lord God Almighty, when men seem hopeless, we have a, the anchor in you, Christ. And so we look to you once again, who is able to do exceedingly above all things, that we can ask or think. We leave everything entirely in your care tonight. Bless us once again. Take full control over tonight's proceedings. And we look to you and we give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me see it, Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, first on the evening of the outcome of a national election, it would be the first time in our modern political history that after the results have been made public, that we would be speaking to the country by virtue of this means. This is a wonderful evening, and it's the evening that we are all thankful and we are exceedingly proud and happy this evening to be members of this great institution known as the Jamaica Labour Party. I'll now invite the campaign chairman of the Jamaica Labour Party, my colleague, Babsy Grange, to come forward at this time and extend the courtesies. Thank you so much, Desmond. Most honorable Prime Minister, <laughs> honorable Desmond McKenzie, honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, honorable Nigel Clark, honorable Matthew Samuda, Deputy Chair of the Jamaica Labor Party, Dr. Andre Franklin, supporters who are here tonight, supporters who are watching us on television and on social media, and to the press. Good evening. Today, or tonight, I must thank the people of Jamaica for not giving the Jamaica Labor Party a dibby dibby win, as I'd ask them not to do. I wanted them to make a decisive, resounding decision. And tonight, I'm happy to say they have done so. I always had the confidence in you, the people out there, that you would do the right thing. And you have done the right thing. But we are humbled by what you have done. Because what it has shown us is that you demand performance, and when one performs, you reward accordingly. And so tonight, I just want to say it was a challenging campaign because this, was, this campaign was during a period of the COVID-19 pandemic, and so it wasn't easy. But my task as campaign chair was made far easier than it would have been was it not for the support I got from the Jamaica Labor Party campaign team. I want to really big up campaign spokespersons, Kamina Johnson-Smith and Nigel Clark. They represented the party and its work exceedingly well. 
When they spoke, they spoke from the heart, they were honest, they were direct, and they provided Jamaica with the information that the people required in order to judge us. And thank you, Jamaicans, you marked us well. I want to especially thank Matthew Samuda, chairman of the Jamaica Labor Party Public Relations Team. And to say Matthew and his team did an excellent, excellent job. I also wanted to thank the chairman of the party who is not with us tonight, but who communicated effectively to our people out there on the ground. And of course, our deputy chairman, who along with Senator Tom Tavares Vinson carried their work at the Electoral Commission astutely and in detail. We were always informed. We were always kept informed. And we were always advised to remember campaign financing and how we should conduct ourselves. There are so many other persons, the staff here at Belmont Road. I really want us all to give them a big round of applause. Very dedicated to our affiliates who have done a wonderful job. It was teamwork, and teamwork makes the dream work. And so tonight, I'm a proud member of the Jamaica Labor Party. And every Jamaican out there must be proud of what they have provided. They have indicated to the world that they have every confidence in the Jamaica Labor Party. And I must say to our General Secretary, Dr. Chang, who is in the West, is that I notice the West is almost green from the grill to St. Anne. Isn't that wonderful? That's really wonderful. You know, what is so good about Jamaicans is that there's a saying, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool them all the time. And so whatever was presented to them as the alternative, they didn't buy it. They didn't accept it because they know that the Jamaica Labor Party comes to the rescue of this country every time that the country needs solid, focused, capable hands. And so, I just want to say that tonight belongs to our Prime Minister and leader of the Jamaica Labor Party, who has led us. He has led us with very firm hands and he has set the example for us to follow. There were talk about the Prime Minister promised to give us job descriptions, but he didn't. Yes, he did. He took us through the grill. We had to say what we we're going to do, and we had to deliver. And so, tonight, I end by saying that we are grateful to all those Jamaicans who supported us and that we will continue to represent all Jamaicans regardless of their political persuasion. Prime Minister, congratulations, sir, and we love you very much. Thank you. And now we will be joined by means of technology by our general secretary out of St. James, Dr. Horace Chang, at this time to make his contribution. Thank you for that leader and Ben Sherman, my party leader, Andrew Michael Honis, Ben the officers of the Jamaica Labour Party, members of the campaign team, to our successful candidates and to all our candidates out there, to the army of supporters who made this victory possible, the army of party workers, PD captains, supervisors, volunteers, and many others who has given the Jamaica Labour Party this massive victory. To all Jamaicans who have witnessed 
and seeing so the future of our country embodying our leader who have outlined the kind of future that we should have. I want to thank them for the support that they have given to us and for the victory they have given to Jamaica Labour Party. We are humbled by the support because with it comes a massive responsibility at this point in time. But I have confidence that we are part of the leader and who we have seen the kind of characteristics that you need to lead us in these troubled times will be able to take us out of this stronger than we, as we move forward. I really want to commend all our candidates that worked hard, but I want to make special mention of the army of young candidates, new candidates that were recruited on the direction of this part leader. While they were all successful, and others, in fact, came in successfully, but I think they presented a new vision of the kind of part we want for the future. Some 18 year women, I think, sent a message to the country that this leadership was looking for new ways of doing things, new ideas, and to incorporate and include all Jamaicans in what we propose to do and to build this country and really bring us into prosperity. The times are challenging, and I know that this part leader will begin work as early as tomorrow morning, as we will be able to give thanks to, to say thank to all those who support us. And I will encourage all our candidates to get out there and thank their constituents, thank you for the support, all the volunteers. They gave time, others gave material support, but the work begins as early as tomorrow. We have a challenging road ahead of us. But I said, I think the people of this country have seen in this party leader, someone who has a vision of what Jamaica should be in this new age, in the fourth industrial revolution. And he has acquired over himself some mind young team members, younger team members who understand and appreciate the nature of this fourth industrial revolution and have the capacity, the commitment, and the willingness to lead Jamaica into this and to offer all Jamaicans equity in the new Jamaica, offer them opportunity and to bring true prosperity. Again, may I thank all my colleagues who worked with me in the Secretariat, who worked with the leaders of the party to ensure we have a victory, even time, these difficult times. To the Army of Volunteers again, and to all who supported us, a heartfelt thank you. God bless you all. We look forward to taking on the job of really making this country safe, secure, and prosperous under the leadership of Andrew McAvoy as Prime Minister. Thank you, Jamaica. Um, and thank you too, Dr. Horace Chan, General Secretary of this great Jamaica Labour Party. Let's welcome now the Member of Parliament elect and Minister of Finance of the constituency of Northwest St. Andrew, Dr. Nigel Clark. Leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, the most honorable Andrew Holness. Deputy Leader, Campaign Chair, Campaign Spokespersons, and Chairman of the PR Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. The people of Jamaica have spoken today, and they have spoken emphatically. By any measure, this is a historic election and a historic election result. The Jamaican people turned out in your thousands, in your tens of thousands, in your hundreds of thousands, abiding by the health protocols, braving the afternoon rain, and have made their decisions clear. We campaigned on our record of achievements, many of them unprecedented, and the people of Jamaica have responded by giving us an increased majority. We are indeed humbled by that, and the Jamaican people can be assured that we will use this increased majority under the leadership of Prime Minister Andrew Holness to continue to deliver policy successes that improve the welfare of the Jamaican people. As we said in the campaign, this election takes place in the context of the the greatest crisis that Jamaica has faced. The Jamaican people can be assured that under Prime Minister Andrew Holness's leadership, we will continue to protect lives and to protect livelihoods. 
and we will use the majority that you have given us to work together to lead Jamaica to a quick and speedy recovery. Now this will require unity. Today we went to the polls and participated as JLP and PNP. Tomorrow it's very important that we wake up as all Jamaicans. And there's no better person to lead Jamaica in the unified way that is going to be required for us to recover from this pandemic than the leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, Prime Minister Andrew Holness. With that, in all humility, we thank the Jamaican people and we commit to working together with you so that Jamaica can recover strongly from this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time this great Jamaica Labour Party won consecutive general elections in this country was between 1962 to 1972. This party is an institution of greatness. Our leader and founder, Sir Alexander Bustamante, built this party from the bowels of the working class people of Jamaica. This party have grown and have grown to the extent that every time the country needs a government to respond to crisis, the Jamaican people turn to the Jamaica Labour Party. It is my distinct pleasure this evening to bring now to address the country on the evening of this massive endorsement of his leadership of Jamaica the Member of Parliament for the constituency of West Central St. Andrew, leader of the great Jamaica Labour Party, and Prime Minister-elect, the Most Honorable Andrew Michael Olness. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Desmond. Good evening, Jamaica. First, let me say thanks to the Almighty for sparing us and for guarding us with his mighty hand. We went into an election with the backdrop of a pandemic. And you will notice that I'm speaking to you while still wearing my mask as a symbol that we are still under serious threat of the pandemic. By and large, I think most Jamaicans tried to abide by the protocols. I want to give the assurance to Jamaicans tonight that your government will continue its effective management of the COVID pandemic to keep you safe and to protect your livelihoods. No doubt we are entering into a new phase of the pandemic, an inevitable phase of the pandemic, and that will require uh, a new strategy of management. But whatever we do, you can rest assured that we will keep you safe, we will keep our frontline workers safe, we will make the necessary allocations in our budget so that you can be cushioned and cope with the economic fallout that accompanies the pandemic. Tonight, the victor is the people of Jamaica.
you came out in your hundreds of thousands and you participated in the solemn process of democracy. You voted. You expressed yourself through the ballot. There is indeed cause for celebration, but there is also, I would believe, significant cause for consideration. Uh, there are many Jamaicans who did not participate. Uh, there are many Jamaicans who, for fear of the virus, decided not to come to the polls. But there are also many Jamaicans who, for other reasons, apathy, frustration with the process, decided not to participate. So even though we have this overwhelming majority and the people have given us the mandate that we require, we are still considerate of those Jamaicans who still look on with uh, uh, some suspicion, some concern, some apathy on the political process. So we are very cautious in our approach to receiving this overwhelming majority. It must never be that the government that emerges from this victory takes on any characteristics of arrogance, of inhumility. It must never be that the government that emerges from this victory takes the people for granted in any way. As I stand here tonight, I am obviously happy to have won, but I want to assure all of you that I do carry this burden with great consideration of the expectations of not those, just those who elected us, but those who are looking on us for future decision as to whether or not they will participate in the process. And I want to say to those persons who didn't participate this time, that we, as a new government, with an, uh, a mandate that is indisputable, that we will conduct ourselves in a way that will make you proud as well and make you want to participate the next time around. I raise this in my acceptance I don't call this a, a victory speech. Because with such a large mandate, it brings a whole new dynamic as to how we manage government. In our last government, the narrative of corruption dogged us. And it is not something that we can hide away from. And I want to be clear, because there are many persons who will now be assuming state authority who may not have the understanding as to how that authority should be used, they will know clearly that this government does not stand for corruption. Amen. We have, as a country, managed to come to consensus on fiscal matters, on monetary policy. There is an evolving consensus on crime and violence, national security. We have a consensus developing around growth policy. But there must now be a clear consensus, strong position on anti-corruption. The mandate is also a victory for conscientious and thoughtful policy. Uh, we saw manifestos being presented that were poles apart in terms of their content and structure. The manifesto that won is a manifesto that was realistic, the manifesto that was doable. And what it says to me is that the Jamaican politics, the Jamaican people, 
are maturing in their outlook. They understand that populist policies can have a destructive impact on the national good. So in that regard, Jamaica has won. We have had a very, uh, by and large, uh, a peaceful election, an election that can be emulated by other countries. And we must all cherish our democracy. I want to acknowledge the PNP and Dr. Peter Phillips. Uh, tonight, I received a call from Dr. Phillips uh, conceding and congratulating. And I thought that was very sportsmanlike <laughs> and very dignified and, it, and really reflects well on our politics. And I too obviously commended him on a, putting up a good fight. Um, as I said today in an interview, politics can be like gladiator sport. But after it is finished, we must all try to be good sportsmen and sportswomen. And for good reason. The task ahead of us is not just for the Jamaica Labour Party. The task ahead of us is for all of us, including the PNP. And so tonight, I also appeal to PNP supporters. Do not feel dejected. Join us in celebrating Jamaica's victory. You will have a very important role to play in Jamaica's stronger recovery. And I am clear that there should not be any victimization, any retribution, any malice in how we move forward as a government. We must embrace everyone. We need everyone on board for Jamaica to recover stronger. As I close, I want to thank my family, my wife, Juliet, who is still in our constituency. I, I brought my younger son with me for him to get some insights into politics. I want to thank the campaign team. Um, you would have heard from Babsy and from Desmond and Nigel. Um, but I want to have a, a special commendation for Kamina. Kamina. <laughs> I want to thank the officers of the party, chairman, deputy chairman, and our very hardworking general secretary and his deputy general secretaries, and all who worked and participated. I put a word of prayer out for our deputy campaign chairman, Rudyard Spencer, who is in hospital at this moment. And I want to welcome our newly elected candidates. And for those who were not um, successful at the polls, to say that your effort contributed to the victory and you are a part of the winning team. There were some um, unfortunate events today, uh, which one of them I will acknowledge is the um, sudden death of a voter at the polls. I um, extend my sympathies to her family. But as I close, I give the assurance that with this large margin, this solid mandate, that we will be responsible. We will be responsible with the power that you have given to us. We will continue our good policies. We will keep Jamaica on the path to prosperity. We will usher in 
an era of stability on which we will grow, we will usher in an era where Jamaica can fulfill its true destiny. May God bless you. And Prime Minister of Jamaica, the most honorable Andrew Holness. In closing, let me say to the many supporters of the party, those who are watching and listening to us, that we are the party of choice. And let us ensure that in whatever we do, we remember the words of our party leader. Let us be dignified and extend a hand of fellowship and love to our brothers and sisters. We close with the playing of the party's anthem. Welcome back. Well, the race is over. The JLP has won it. They have taken not 32 seats, but 49 to the PMP's 14. Now, what this means is that there will be a greater number of women in the House and also a number of new faces. Also, a number of PNP incumbents, the Dr. Wicker McNeil, Horace Daly, Peter Bunting, Fenton Ferguson, they will not be in the Parliament when it resumes. Now, it also means that the GLP now has a greater control of the House for the next five years as they form the government. Now, this is a glimpse of what the House will look like. On the government side, there will be 49 seats, including the Speaker, and on the opposition side, 14 seats. Now, this may raise some questions about legislation and debates going forward, but that's a debate for another time. For now, that's where we put a wrap on our Decision 2020 virtual presentation. I'm Herman Green. Dion, it's over to you. Thank you so very much, Herman. Okay, so, so let me ask our panelists then for comment on the tone and content of the Prime Minister's speech. Let me start with you, Floyd. Well, I think the Prime Minister, you know, had a, a very good uh, response in terms of his victory. And I think, you know, he has set what I regard as a dignified response in terms of the victory of the Jamaica Labour Party. And I congratulate him and his team and, you know, um, we look forward to working together to build the country because tomorrow morning we have to continue the ass assault on COVID-19 and, you know, we have to be supportive of whatsoever initiatives there are to deal with that uh, dreaded pandemic. By the way, I, let me just take the opportunity as well, since he mentioned it in his speech, the um, supporter who died um, suddenly in St. Mary because it's, she, the person is from my community. It's a family that I'm very much aware of and we are a very close-knitted family in the community of Baileysville and we extend our condolences to the mm -hmm. family. Just before I got to Nicole, I told viewers before the break that the count we had had at the time was 50 to the Jamaica Labour Party, 13 to the People's National Party. You heard Herman there say 49-14, the 14th seat in addition to the ones I told you. St. Catherine Northwest was won by the PNP's Hugh Graham, defeating the JLP's Newton Amos. And that one was very close. That is, let me see, 22 votes. Mm. 5283 to the PNP's Hugh Graham and 5261 to the JLP's Newton Amos. Nicole. I, I think the tone was, was, was good. I think it reflected an appreciation for the seriousness of the times. What we're experiencing is absolutely extraordinary. It's unprecedented. And I get a sense that there is an appreciation for that. I appreciated when he said that he will not take the people for granted. 
I think those are very, very critical words. And I think uh, that Prime Minister Holness has to be held to that because this matter of trust, trust in our leaders is an extremely important um, matter. And there is much that has been reposed uh, in Prime Minister Holness, a lot of trust and in the Jamaica Labour Party. And it has to be handled, I think, extremely well. Um, so congratulations, as Floyd said, to, to the Jamaica Labour Party. And the overall voter turnout, the figures I'm having here are about 37 percent. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing about 37 percent voter turnout. This, of course, down from the 48 percent in 2016, which at the time was the lowest number. Um, I think even with voter apathy, a lot of that is going to have to be chalked up to fears of COVID. COVID. Clive? Well, the Prime Minister, I think, displayed tonight the fact as to how heavy this victory is. And he made the point that there is a tremendous responsibility. And it means that his government would have to meet very squarely the concerns in the economy and of course the social concerns of the people. It's important too because when he highlights the fact that the leader of the opposition did call him, while it is a convention, it is important mm -hmm. because he acknowledged that because at this point in time, the opposition is really unsettled and we need to telegraph to the country that we do need a viable opposition. So why did not say that? I think the whole approach of mentioning that at this time is important. I also am happy that the tone by the persons there at the headquarters, albeit that there were, was not the opportunity to have many persons at the headquarters, but their body language and the way they spoke communicated a sense in which they generally are humbled by what has happened and also, no doubt, concerned as to if they can meet what the people have placed on them. Mm -hmm. right. And that tone is very, very important. But by and large, at this point in time, a welcome speech, congratulations to the Jamaica Labour Party, but the work does begin tomorrow morning. Okay. Well, before we continue yeah, our work okay. here, let's go to a little bit of a break and we'll be back after. Twenty twenty, we've got you covered.
reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's the big one. We are going to create the new Jamaica. This team is ready to rescue Jamaica. Twenty twenty, the year of the most twists and turns, and we've got you covered. Decision twenty twenty, COVID style coverage. From the opening of the polls across Jamaica, our teams will bring you ballot by ballot coverage. We'll give you the latest voter scout, spiced with our experienced analysts. Thank you so much for staying with us here on TVJ as Decision 2020 continues. So the seat count is 49 to the Jamaica Labour Party, 14 to the People's National Party. Now, Emily, after 2016, the consensus was that Andrew Holness had to tread very carefully within his own party, mm -hmm. given the very narrow margin of victory. Mm -hmm. This time, this is such a decisive victory. How much more of a hand does it give him in reshaping the party, reshaping his cabinet, basically um, doing the reforms perhaps that he wants to put in place? I think this party has been Andrew Holness's party for a long time now. He's had a handle on it. In fact, Andrew Holness is more popular now than the JLP. This is a man who came to the country sort of a bit tepid in 2011, He's rebranded himself. He's become more mm -hmm. comfortable with himself. He lost the election in 2011, and he clearly became comfortable in his own skin. And why I say he has had the handle on this party for a long time, when he moved Daryl Vaz out of environment, when the Hollywell matter came up, and not even the big bad Daryl Vaz, who was leading the Young Turks back in the day <coughs> when... Edward Siago was there. He couldn't even make a sound. It demonstrated to me that Andrew Holness is in charge of the party. Mm -hmm. He's fully in charge now. All of what is going on is being shaped according to what he wants. So he has a lot of latitude. And I think we've had from his speech tonight that not only has he come into a full understanding as to how he needs to move the party, but perhaps how he needs to move the country. The victory that they have tonight is a victory that could cause them, with more than two-thirds majority of the lower house of parliament, to make or to change any law. And that's an awesome victory that they have. But he seems to recognize that he won't use the power just because they have it. He spoke of corruption. I don't think it's lost on him. And it couldn't be that the parties perceived to be corrupt. And he has committed at this time to doing something about it. Um, so we just watch and see. One thing I want to say before we go, I think there's a big winner tonight. There's more than one, and I'll probably tell you more tomorrow. Glasspool Brown and the EOG, brilliant job. We had results here by some minutes after 9 o'clock. After, I mean, it's a low voter turnout, but I continue to be pleased with this institution that we're building the EOJ, and I think we, EOJ, Glasspool Brown and his team should take great credit for it. Earl, any lessons here from history hmm. in what we've seen in previous landslides? Lots of lessons to be learned. Let's, let's go back to the very beginning. There were 32 seats. The PNP won only six of those 32 seats, including, as I mentioned earlier, its president not winning his seat on that first occasion. <laughs> there was a little bit of bloodletting in 1952, after they had lost the second election in 1949. Mm -hmm. After they had settled that matter, they won nationally for the first time in 1955. 
after they were almost wiped out by the JLP in 1980, winning only nine of the 60 seats. In fact, with very shortly thereafter, by 1981, I think, the PNP had reasserted itself mm -hmm. and was in mm -hmm. fact leading mm -hmm. in the polls mm -hmm. in early 1983 and then came the Grenada situation. Mm -hmm. right. The JLP um, enjoyed a, a bounce thereafter and you had the snap election, but the PNP in opposition then was quite robust. Then it rode its electoral victory in the local government election of 1986 yes. into a sweeping national victory in 1989. Then, with the JLP having problems in 1993, it won 52 mm -hmm. to 8. The JLP, after it was almost wiped out in that 1993 election, did mount a robust opposition in the House as well. So sometimes you can be energized or re-energized mm -hmm. by the fact that you are small in numbers. And sometimes, during that period, new talent can emerge. Mm -hmm. And so they need to be very careful about how they organize themselves and pick the eight senators that they will have very carefully as well because the Senate is going to be a key component mm -hmm. of how the opposition operates. Emily spoke a while ago about having a, like a two-thirds majority in the House of Representatives. The only check on that, if a government were to be um, tempted to run rampant, mm -hmm. would be the, the fact that a government does not enjoy a two-thirds majority in, in the, the upper Senate. house, the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for certainly, certainly for simple legislation, right. I mean that would pass without any problem. Right. Floyd, let me ask you, as a as a as an experienced um, person who has sat in the Senate for for quite a few years, the importance now of the choice of opposition senators that Earl was just alluding to. Well, it is extremely important because. Uh, that is where you're going to have a lot of individuals that you will have to use to re help in rebuilding the organization. Some of the new talents that you would want to see are uh, being placed in the Senate to articulate um, new approaches on different national issues. So it's going to be extremely important. And you also want to have uh, um, a, 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 a mixture of um, experience as well because, you know, uh, coming into the Senate, you have to read the legislation so that you are able to participate in the debate and contribute meaningfully to uh, the debate. So they're going to have to be a delicate balance of uh, experience and youth coming into the Senate to make sure that we mount a uh, a, a, a successful um, opposition in, in, in the upper house. And uh, um, the opposition leader will no doubt be looking to the Senate to help to fill the shadow cabinet because very limited choice here in the, in the lower house, Clive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's very important. And I'm happy that Floyd mentioned that because you can't just look now in terms of building your organization you have to have persons who are able to articulate and look at the issues as they come that government is going to be putting forward. You need to have persons who can articulate positions, look at the legislation and what have you. Mm -hmm. But that shadow cabinet is going to be important. So you have to have some standing. Being in the Senate affords you some standing in that regard because you have a national profile and you can speak to legislation. I, I believe, though, that the, the shadow cabinet is one which will have to position itself in terms of looking very carefully at how government is acting out on behalf of the people. They have to stand in the breach because mm -hmm. they now will be able to provide an opportunity and a platform mm -hmm. for the country to say, well, yes, we do have an alternative. As we're speaking now tonight, people are concerned. I'm looking at Twitter. People are concerned saying, yes, but we cannot afford a weak opposition. Mm -hmm. They're saying that the democracy is too important for that. And that Absolutely. speaks, quite mm -hmm. frankly, to a greater understanding mm -hmm. of the role of, of mm -hmm. government and, of course, the role of the parliament. And that speaks well. What the opposition leader needs to do, whoever he or she may be, must be able to answer that mm -hmm. so that they can really be an alternative to the government. Are you expecting no a period of... Mm, I don't know, quiet from the opposition as it 
licks its collective wounds and let me bring out all the metaphors um, with, with the tail between the legs. Are we going to see them kind of slink away for a period of time? They are going to slink away and one can understand why. Because this landslide victory is not a landslide victory by an opposition. It's a landslide victory by an incumbent government. Mm -hmm. And so it speaks to the fact that the, the PMP has disconnected very, very badly with the electorate. Yeah. And so you want to go through that, which is why you need someone who can say, listen, no, it is deeper than that. We have been here before. We can do it better. We have to swallow our pride. And what it also means is that those who are satisfied in terms of one side as against the other, and I speak to it, a number of persons who have retained their seats supported Phillips. They are not part of the support for Bunting. They now have to look and say, listen, put that aside. Who can now galvanize and position the party to go forward? And that is not easy to do, especially if politicians are concerned, but they must do it. We, we mentioned it a little earlier, but is it really okay for Peter Phillips to finish the night and not come out at all? And I mean, it's not unprecedented. I remember Portia Simpson Miller losing and, and not coming out herself. But is there an issue here of, of graciousness, of, of needing to send a signal, or was it enough to send out, send out Philip Paul? Let me ask Nicole. Well, I think ideally, obviously, we would have wanted him to, to come out. And as you say, it's not unprecedented. Um, I think sometimes, though, that when we look at our leaders, we, we tend to sort of separate the feeling from the situation, I, I sort of think about it. Um, and I, I said to myself, well, this is someone who has recently, very recently undergone a challenge for this position. You have fought it off, you've come out, and Peter Phillips was saying that he would have earned 40 seats. So there was some um, expectation, I suppose. I don't know how real it was, but there was some expectation that he would have been able to advance things. He's been totally clobbered and battered and bruised and in very large measure has to deal with that and to think about tomorrow how it is that he is really going to address the beginning of that healing. And so while I believe that in a very ideal situation, he really ought to have come out um, and said something, uh, at least appreciate even those who came out to vote, uh, uh, show some connection with the people. On the one hand, I believe that that would have been good. On the other hand, I do sort of have some understanding from why there might have been a, a need uh, for him to feel that he should retract for a short time. So, I, I, just, just to say that I, I, I think it is really a, a, a serious moment for him. Um, Nicole has alluded to some of the issues, but re remember and bear in mind that he would have been the first leader of the People's National Party to never become Prime Minister of Jamaica. And that is a big blow for him. And I think he's doing a lot of contemplation, a lot of reflection. And I think by tomorrow, I mean, you, you will hear from him. The first thing that I, I am comforted with is the fact that he has called the Prime Minister and um, accepted defeat and uh, extended con um, congratulations to the Jamaica Labour Party. And I think that by tomorrow, you should hear from him. Okay, all right. Well, Emily, I see the wheels turning in your mind there. Yes, yeah, turning a lot because I think more than anybody else, as Floyd spoke, I reflected, more than anybody else in politics, I think Dr. Phillips is more than deserving of the position of prime minister. And I actually think that the PNP and its machinery, its actors, they need to do a serious assessment, perhaps more than Peter Phillips, to say whether they built up the machinery as they should mm -hmm. around the leader. Mm -hmm. I think they need to question seriously whether 
it was a good decision to have brought in Julian Robinson as the General Secretary and to have continued post-2016 with him in that position because this is, the machinery was an absolute sham. They won in 1989 and they kept winning elections. We never thought it possible that they could lose. And for them to have lost were the greatest carnage in the political history of Jamaica in recent times. It says to me that the retooling, the building up of the machinery, the listening to the people on the ground, they were not doing it. You can't have your captain out there trying to do something and the rest of the team. The team can't even hold itself up. It's a big indictment on the party as a whole. And while people will blame Dr. Phillips for it, the entire PNP, I think, has failed itself in big ways with these results tonight. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty sad for Peter, Dr. Peter Phillips. Yeah. Because he's a yeah. hard yes. worker. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But you, 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 it, to be a leader, man, you have to be able to to see the weaknesses, to delegate, to tell people where you want the gaps to be filled. And obviously, he struggled a lot with that. But I think mm -hmm. the, the actors in the party, they have a lot to answer for. All right, we're just about out of time. Earl Moxham, this though makes him the first opposition leader never to have become prime minister. Yes. Um, and first president. I, I'll president. start with a, with a little bit of an anecdote, very quickly. Vivian Blake, who lost the race for the presidency of the PNP to Michael Manley in 1969, had quite a sense of humor. I ran into him in 1997, <laughs> and he said to me, you know, I've always maintained that I am the best prime minister Jamaica never <laughs> had. Who's <laughs> <laughs> Gold, uh, Bruce Gold uh, said uh, it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what I would say of Dr. Phillips is that if you look at his career in government, you go back let's say to 1962 and come forward in terms of our independence era, he would rank in terms of cabinet mm -hmm. ministers, Absolutely. perhaps in the top four alongside Edward Siaga, Robert Lightburn, and P.J. Mm -hmm. Patterson. Yeah. He had four substantive uh, portfolios culminating mm -hmm. with the Ministry of Finance, which took the last PNP administration in Jamaica through a very, very difficult period and mm -hmm. came through that period very, very effectively. In the end, he will not get to the office of prime minister, mm -hmm. but I think mm -hmm. history will judge him kindly in terms of the contributions he has made in the various portfolios that he has held mm -hmm. while serving the people of Jamaica. L last thing I will say, Dion, I, I actually think Floyd and viewers, nothing should have stopped Dr. Phillips from coming out tonight. We've built up an awful lot of respect for him you don't break with convention like that at all. No is the time for magnanimity. No is the time for you to signal to the people whatever it is you need to signal. Even if it may be hypocritical in this moment, you must come out to accept defeat. You never stay away. And I don't like that part. I'm sure he'll have a reason for it. But there are some conventions that we should be very reluctant to break with. And this is one of them. I think okay. you'll hear from him by tomorrow, though. Okay, too late. Well, of course, we continue to bring you ongoing coverage because the work now begins. <laughs> We're going to be seeing the formation of the cabinet. Um, those discussions will be taking place. They're swearing in lots and lots to cover. And, of course, we will have it all for you. But it's time to say goodbye for this evening. There are so many people to thank. I'm just going to thank everybody. <laughs> and thanks so much to you for watching and listening across all our platforms. It has been a great pleasure being with you. It's been my honor to be your host. And thank you so much.
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for Twenty twenty, the year of the